Good afternoon and welcome to this special meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. I've asked Commissioner Trace if she would start this meeting with an invocation to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I ask you to stand, please. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that we can gather and that we can discuss differences. And I just ask you to please keep this meeting peaceful, to watch over us and when we leave, and just to remember that we are all Americans and we stand together. In your name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have lots of seats if you all would like to take a seat. Um, it is very good to see all of you here this afternoon on this I guess it's raining out, kind of rainy afternoon um, for this special meeting. Um, I did want to tell you about how this special meeting came into being um, in light of events that are going on throughout our country and as we became aware of a, um, an event planned for Monday um, to talk about the memorial that is the Confederate memorial that is over at the historic courthouse. Uh, I, as the um, chairman of the board, decided that we need to talk about public safety and we needed to have a conversation to decide what we will do to make sure that our citizens and our employees remain safe. So uh, I consulted with the um, county attorney and with staff and we decided to hold this, what is now called an emergency meeting under the statutes. Um, so that we could have this discussion here today. And um, I really appreciate all of the cooperation from my fellow board members, Commissioner Baugh's on the phone, so we do have a full board here to discuss this. Um, and uh, so at this time, I want to say that this is, this is of great concern to Manatee County citizens and we, why we appreciate the input of other groups, this is about Manatee County and how Manatee County is affected. And I implore, as we do in this country, we have peaceful demonstrations, and I implore whatever goes on, whatever discussions go on, that be, they be done in a spirit of goodwill and cooperation. And so with that said, I do want to ask our, um, because in this day and age of uh, social media, of information that spreads at the speed of light, I would like to ask our law enforcement officials to come forward and give us any update with what we might expect or what we anticipate is happening in this community on Monday so you'll get a feel for why we felt it was important to have this meeting. Any information and update? I know there are a lot of people that are watching this, have read online, have read in the newspaper, but I think um, any information that we can have on what we might expect to happen in downtown Bradenton on Monday would be helpful. Please just come forward and introduce yourself. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Colonel Dwayne Dennison with the Manatee County Sheriff's Office. Thank you, Commissioners. I want to commend you all on having this meeting. I think it's a good piece of knowledge to give to the public and let them know where we stand and how we feel about this incident. Uh, I can assure you that we are going to make sure it's a safe and peaceful environment for everybody, for all. Just like you got through here in the Pledge of Allegiance, justice for all. And we're going to assure that that takes place. We do have a plan in place. Uh, just to relieve you of that, uh, we've been planning for several days. But at this point in time, we don't anticipate anything derogatory. Uh, we're fairly confident it, it will be a peaceful you know, protest and demonstration, and uh, we're going to make sure that that is what takes place. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything else to add? Okay. And I have been in touch with um, the mayor of the city of Bradenton, and he assures me, of course, that the um, police department is also very aware of the, and again, our information comes primarily from what we read online and from the newspaper, so we don't really know what to expect, but we want to be ready. We want our citizens and our employees to remain safe, and that is of the utmost importance. 
But obviously the topic that is here before us today is something that I think has recently only come to light for most of us. Uh, I will say for me personally, um, I was not even aware that we had a Confederate memorial in downtown Bradenton until I started reading the, um, the news, the media about it. And I think maybe many people actually were not aware. Um, I will tell you that since this began, I have taken a lot of time to read as much as I possibly can. I would like to thank the clerk's office, Angel Colony. So you know Angel is in charge, the clerk's office is in charge of our historical resources in this community. And they do a wonderful job of maintaining our historical resources. So um, they have provided an incredible amount of information about how this memorial came into being in 1924. I'm going to ask that that information be placed online so people can educate themselves about how this memorial came into being. The folks, the community leaders at the time that raised the funds to be able to dedicate this museum to the county and the city, it was actually done by, I gotta say, keep saying memorial. I encourage you to read what the difference between a monument and a memorial is. I've been educated on that. The um, memorial was actually paid for by no nations of citizens of this community. And it was raised through the United Daughter of the Confederacy, Judah P. Benjamin Chapter. They began fundraising for this monument in February 1924, and then it was dedicated on Sunday, June 26, 1924, at 3.30 p.m. Recognizing that what has happened in other areas of the community, or the county, country, excuse me, it's been kind of a long week, we've had lots of meetings. Um, I had, did reach out to Jan Green, who is president of our local chapter of the United Daughters of the Confederacy. She also happens to be chairman of the Manatee County Historical Commission. Her first request was to me, to me was to make sure the memorial, the actual structure itself remains safe. She asked me if we could take this structure down and store it for safekeeping so that it is not a flashpoint for any kind of um, activity that might occur. I said that's exactly what staff and I had discussed you know, this uh, memorial structure was moved in 2014. It's not in its original location, and the clerk can tell you that it was moved when we redid the um, grounds that have, were dedicated um, to uh, Chip Shore. And so it, we know it can be moved safely, and that is the recommendation after discussing with staff that I'm bringing before my board today that that memorial be placed in safekeeping so that it will not be a flashpoint, it will not be a target for any activity. We're not saying that there is anything that is going to happen to it after that. There has to be a community discussion. This is an emergency meeting to take emergency action. So that is the only action that I'm asking my board to consider today. We know this is so a moved. huge concern. Wait. She can't make. She can't make a motion. That's why I said so. Move. I know she can't. Yep. She can move if you want. I, I just want to know where the statue was or the monument was beforehand. Where the gazebo is. It was somewhere on the grounds. I don't know Same if. Same grounds. I don't know if Angel, if you want to come forward, perhaps um, Angel can maybe answer some of these questions. Angel Colony, so who is clerk of our court and keeper of the historical. Um, well, whatever. Our historical parks. Historical resources. Resources, thank you. Angel Caloniso, Clerk of the Court for Manatee County. The memorial was actually located closer to the north side, more visible on Manatee Avenue side. In fact, it's visible in older paintings, if you see older paintings of the courthouse. It was moved as part of the landscape project. My predecessor, Mr. Shore, had it part of the design that it be moved where it presently is, and it actually was only moved a few feet several feet, not okay. far. And that's not unusual for when you're redoing grounds to, to you know, to try to create a beautiful environment. Correct. So um, at this time, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, we had a motion. Can, can you just wait, um, Commissioner Smith? Yes, Madam Chair, I can. Okay. 
and I know that um, we're going to we're going to hear from the public. Thank you, Angel. I might have more questions for you as this goes on. So I'm going to take um, questions um, from our board, and then we'll take public comment. I, Commissioner De Sabatino is on the board. That was my question. Where was it before? Okay. Thank you. You're good, Commissioner Whitmore. Uh, and tell me who, where Miss Green is from again. She's here. She's a local. She's, no, she's on the board of. She is the president of the local chapter of the United Daughters of the Confederacy, okay. and she is also chairman of the Manatee County Historical Commission. Okay, and um, that's the organization that actually I think paid to have it moved also, right? Uh, they, they paid to have the um, From what memorial I... erected. They, they fundraised, and again, you know, if you look at the, um, the articles in the news at the time, I mean, these articles ran for three pages. There's considerable information in the historical uh, records on how this all came into being, what their thoughts were, and I encourage you to read that. It's really, you can be very much educated about this issue, and it's, it's not what you think. Can and I, that's all I can say. I'm, I'm sorry. Finished. Can I, um, is Ms. Green here? Can I just ask? No, she is not well. Oh, you just. She's uh, not here today. Okay. I spoke to her. Um, She's I going think to send I heard that the organization actually um, paid to move it to the side of the. Uh, I remember some kind of people saying they were raising money to move it because it was being moved from the front. So we don't have any documentation of that. We're not well, aware of it. Can you answer that question? And I assume so you would know. Because I think it's kind Vanessa, of been can in you there. Hear us? Vanessa? Vanessa? It's um, been in their auspices, I know, for a long we time. We need to get Vanessa. Madam Chair, if I may, uh, it, it appears as though uh, Commissioner uh, Ball is not in communication with us here. Yeah, I just heard Vanessa, it. can you hear us? To hold on for just a minute. Vanessa um, had plans to here be out of town. Call an emergency meeting. It's hard to get everyone here. So we would like to have her. I know she very much wants to be involved in the conversation. I'm going to try to get her again. Hello. Can you hear us, Vanessa? Vanessa, can you hear us? Hold on. What about if one of us use our cell phones and put it to the mic to call her? Would that be okay? Have you got me this time? Can you hear us? Can you, Hello. Can you hear us, Vanessa? Can you, yes, Betsy, I can. Evidently, I was on mute. I've been trying to watch the meeting, uh, the however, the live stream. Okay. All right, we will try. Cut the volume down so that you can't hear it, however. Okay. We'll ask everyone to lean into the microphones and talk. That, that should help. Um, Angel's going to explain about how the uh, memorial got moved. It was moved uh, part of the landscape project by the company, and I, I have looked to see if it was singled out or line itemed, and it wasn't. It was inclusive in the project, and that was part of the project. And it, like I said, it wasn't moved very far, but I believe it had to make room for the gazebo and the garden that is there. So there was no special funding, not at all, is to move it as it got moved in 2014. No, it was only from the very beginning. Carol, okay. does it answer your question? Yeah. Commissioner Trace. Um, if we remove it before Monday, what's the cost and who is paying? Um, we have been uh, in touch. With, well, John, I'm going to let you answer that. That's a technical uh, question. Thank you, Madam. I'm John Osborne. I'm the interim deputy county administrator. Uh, we have been in contact with a contractor who could potentially move the object and move it into stores for us. Uh, we have some rough estimates of cost. However, it, it could vary a bit. We estimate about $10,000 to move and store it. But again, it could vary slightly based upon time and materials and that kind of thing. It is a large, heavy object. It would be come out of the yeah. county? From the general fund? Yeah, unless the bucks want to chip in. But um, no. It's reserves. That was a joke. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, as far as we know, it would have to come from county reserves, the $10,000. What about the pirates chipping in? Uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Okay. Uh, Commissioner um, De Sabatino and then Commissioner Smith. Um, I want to ask the county attorney. I went ahead and I <coughs> walked across the street and I took pictures of all four sides. Um, can I put it on the overhead and I can email the pictures in? 
Okay. Certainly. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it, the, the newspaper did have, the Braden Herald did have pictures of all four <coughs> sides, so I saw that, but. That's from from the center of the courtyard looking west, okay? And then I'm gonna zoom in on what the bottom of the monument says. I'm gonna read it. Calm and noble in peace, courageous and chivalrous in war, true to the best traditions of the South, the Confederate soldier lives enshrined in the hearts of his grateful countrymen. On the bottom, Robert E. Lee. Next side, which would face north, is a picture of a flag. It's very worn. It's hard to see, and it says, in memory of our Confederate soldiers. You see that? The side facing to the facing west. Um, erected by Judah P. Benjamin, Chapter, United Daughters of the Confederacy, June 3rd, 1924, Stonewall Jackson. And this other side was hard to see because it's heavily shrubbed now. And has some kind of logo, the 1861-1865, Lest We Forget, Jefferson Davis. And I will email those to the clerk of the court. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Smith. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. You know, um, my phone has been ringing all day, so uh, I was a little tardy getting in here. Um, uh, uh, several attorneys called me. Uh, in fact, my, my, my good friend David Finkelstein, who actually was a representative many years, but several more called me. In fact, several told me that they don't believe their client can get a fair trial in Manatee County. Uh, if, if, if this continue to, to stay and what's going on in America and the statements being said in the pool of jury potentials in Manatee County uh, and it remains up and what's the protests and all this different stuff, that they have serious concern about a jury pool and that they may even challenge for moving the trial. This board is responsible for the courthouse, the grounds and everything else. Now, two years ago, when this issue came up, it, it wasn't hijacked. Now it has been hijacked uh, for issues other than what it was meant to be, to be honest with you. The tide has changed to the point now where it's being used to combat racism and divisiveness in the community, separating people, talking about Jewish people, blacks. It's just chaos. It has been used as a tool to divide this community. And for us to move forward and to keep someone from getting hurt, possibly Monday, we need to take action in this meeting today. We generally do not show those kind of signs because it doesn't help for us to make the decision. And our county attorney generally tells us that we don't need those kind of demonstrations when we're trying to make a decision. Now, I believe in history. I understand history. I would not fight against history. But part of history without telling the truth, and a half truth is outright lie. So we need to make sure we understand what it actually stands for. And I don't want to go there, and I said it before, until emails started coming into this community, uh, Democrat, Republican, people stay on your knees and keep worshiping part parties. That's what you do. I don't worship parties. I worship right from wrong. We, we know that this do. is a very emotional issue to many in this community, but we've got to have leadership. And I, I commended you at the board meeting because you are in a unique position to provide leadership, calm. We need to maintain a uh, very civil conversation about this. We understand that, you know, things can, can rise to a very emotional level, but this is a situation where Yes, history matters, but people's perceptions are going to be very different of what that history was. So, uh, Commissioner Trace. 
Well, I've been thinking about this also and have talked to a lot of people, and I wanted to make sure that uh, I got my thoughts down, so I wrote something. I'll be happy to give it to the clerk. Memorials. To remember. Removing the monument would be easy. Out of sight, out of mind. History is what it is, good and bad. I learned war by my mistakes. What does, this, what does this memorial stand for? Veterans. Men who died for their state and country. All Confederate soldiers are veterans. Even some are interned in Arlington. When I see this memorial, I think of them. People do the right thing for the wrong reason. I am not going, getting into the reason for the war. No one in this room was there. But we should learn from it. Men went to war because their leaders could not find a peaceful pathway. Watching current events make me wonder if history will repeat itself. All the loss of life, waste of resources, and division in the short term changed little. We should learn that real change happened 100 years later when Dr. King peacefully protested. What lessons we learned from memorials are up to us. I chose to take that violence only solves problems for the short term. I've talked to many people about this. Mr. Palmer said discussion with anyone but commissioners is okay. I talked to everyone that has passed in my path, people at the library, publics, folks in the lobby, and I've called people. Only two people said that they are offended. Most say they are tired of being bullied and told what is politically correct. But everyone agreed it is not worth dying for, which I think is what we are here for. We do not want a Charlottesville. I wish to thank the library and Kathy Slusher, the clerk's office, for the information provided to me. Charles, you and I are opposite sides on this issue. I respect that. But on other issues, we agree on affordable housing, early reading. How is it that no one protests these issues, but we now find money to remove a monument no one even knew existed? Mm -hmm. um, we can do better than this. Let's use this for positive. Let's raise money for the early reading instead of destruction of property. Amen. That's very good. Let's attack real issues. I have faith in Manatee County citizens to protect, to protest amicably. We have always worked together, even when we disagree. To a people who, to people who come Monday, R E S P E C T. I looked it up to make sure I spelled it right. Respect each other. Aretha Franklin. Realize <laughs> that America was built on diversity. I can disagree with you, but still respect you. Do not let haters rule the day. Reach a place where both can learn from our mistakes. One of the reasons I ran for commission is my love for this county and its people. I want to be part of harmony, not violence. Let's put a step forward in dealing with real issues. I am not a veteran, but I feel all veterans who died would want to grow and be better because of their sacrifice. Let's not have violence over this. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Di Sabatino. Oh, that was excellent. I really appreciate that. Uh, it also um, came to a head yesterday at the port where someone had brought up a comment that with people there from different countries that they might be offended that we give the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Yes. And you were there, Commissioner Ball. We heard you. you were the port yes, chair. Yes, I was. And, we were all there. And uh, we don't have buttons here, so I raised my hand. And I think I was respectful in saying that I appreciate everyone attending, watching, participating. That's my flag. That's your flag. We pledge allegiance to that. If we start, rem in my opinion, <coughs> if we start removing that monument, then the next step is that flag. And then the next step is everything else that we hold dear. I am not a veteran. My husband was. My father was, my father-in-law was. They fought for this country. They didn't die for the country, but they fought for this country. And it's my opinion right now that this country is in such a state of, of divisiveness. And you have the left side and the right side and the middle. And, you know, we all need to come together. And I, I say all along, when you're elected to this board, you're elected representing a party, but we don't vote on party issues. Nothing here is really partisan. And 
it's just your core values. And as Commissioner Trace eloquently put it, we ran for office because we love this county. We love our citizens. I love South County. And um, I'm here to represent them and we vote for all the citizens of this county. So a lot of times we're sitting here and it might not be this, it might be a land use meeting, it might be something else. But a lot of times we're in a no win. This is a no win situation because Half the people that you'll talk to say one thing, the other half say another. I, too, uh, called a lot of people today and asked their opinion one way or another and give me a, an a unbiased opinion of what you think. And it was unanimous that what I've just said, when's the next thing? Uh, this is a statue that's been there since 1924. I've been by it a million times and never even knew it was there. It's mostly um, vegetation around it. Um, I understand and I empathize with um, Commissioner Smith that everyone has their perception of what things represent. Um, you know, if there was uh, things offend different people for different reasons, but. I think this is a time for all of us to come together and be strong and say, this is our history. You can't hit a delete button and erase it. You can't. It's here. Learn from it and let's move on. I feel like we're going backwards to the civil rights movement. And for what? What is it going to accomplish? It's just putting brother against brother. And uh, I, I just... Commissioner D. Sabatino, yeah. you're kind of crossing the line when you mentioned civil rights movement. We're going back to it. I mean, be careful. Uh, I was going to ask you to clarify. What, be careful. You're well, going back to the civil rights movement, what you meant by that? Well, I just think I'll, I'll leave careful. it alone. I'll retract that. So, um, no, it just... Where do we draw the line? Thank you. Commissioner Smith. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair... I want this motion to go up or down because this is the telling point. Uh, the issue is clear to me. When children come to me and people, white supremacists and Ku Klux Klan embrace statues all over America. That wasn't going on two years ago, four years ago. They have embraced statues. That's their rallying point of recruiting now to organize our children to teach hate. That's what the statue has turned into. No. If you do not, if you do not stop your outburst, you will be escorted out by the police. You do not make outbursts during our meeting. Thank you. You will have an opportunity to speak. Thank you. This what has happened. Or you'll go. NACP is one thing. We're not talking about NACP. We're talking about the statue. And I'm pretty sure you'll give him opportunity to speak. But what we're talking about is what we see in all of America now, where the rallying point has been this statue as a tool to divide now a 32-year-old woman who was protesting, was run down in the street, was not doing anything wrong. Unity is removing this monument as the recommendation came to a place where we can study both sides of the history. And the only thing this commission is saying, there's two sides to that history. Why would we educate our children on what that statue actually means without telling them the truth? The truth hurts sometimes. I had no idea realizing that what I seen on TV and what I just seen on TV, where they admit they're using these statues to recruit individuals, and most of the individuals don't respect government or law enforcement. They anti-government now. My relatives was in the war and died. Veterans died in that war. Purple Hearts in my family died in that war. I got a circuit judge sent me an email, remove the statue. The elected public offender of the 12th Judicial Circuit said, Commissioner, you need to remove the statue. This is what we're dealing with. Now, should we put something on the, on the yard showing during this movement that took place where individuals actually hung? Churches was burned down. 
women was raped, all these overthrowing the government, attempted to overthrow the government, that's part of that same history with the statue. So how are we going to worship a statue and say the history is the history unless we embrace all the other things that took place? The NAACP president was killed by the Ku Klux Klan in Florida. So it's not about NAACP, Democrat or Republican. It's about what's right today. I would be the first one to say, let's keep it there. But what I'm seeing on TV, and how people men that they're using this as a tool to recruit children now, and now it's getting into the school system. Now they're finding out about what history really is, discrimination. I have lived long enough, Madam Chair, where I couldn't even eat into restaurants doing segregation. Place full up with people eating, it says closed as soon as we walked up. I have lived long enough to see that. And if someone today don't understand that people died, white folks died too, protecting black folks. They died protecting them from being hung. They died from protecting them from eating. Mm. So these are the things. Maybe Manatee County don't care nothing about tourism around here. One of the candidates was in the finals, Redrew, the only black. Redrew, I bet you because of this statute, why would an administrator come here and we can't settle the statute issue? Folks, this ain't about changing history. I want history preserved. I think the chair made a recommendation. She talked to the leadership of the organization. Let's study the history. Let's see where we went wrong. But to continue to put it to the courthouse, be careful what you ask for. And I believe in calm. Oh, my word. I believe in peaceful marching. <laughs> Vanessa, you're, well, you're I can... believe we should do all of these different things. <laughs> Mute her. But history today <laughs> will let us know <coughs> where we heading with this board after this vote. And I can tell you, my life and your life will change forever. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Bai, would you like to? You didn't push a button, but I'm going to pretend like I, you did. Thank you. I was waiting for everyone else to speak, and yes, then I would. Okay. She's ready Is for everyone you. else, folks, that's on the board? Yeah, I, okay. at least once. We'll, get, we'll let you have a time. I, some of us are going to speak again, but go ahead. Okay. Well, you know, I, I am amazed. I, I'm sitting here. I'm 63 years old, and I can tell you now that there's hurt in white people on this issue as well, Charles. It hurts me to know what went on in this country, the history in this country that happened. I have no control over that. My parents had no control over that. My grandparents had no control over that. No one in my family owned a slave. No one in my family owned a plantation. But you know what? I had family in that war. And that war happened not just because of slavery. But, you know, that being said, I understand the hurt that comes from the Civil War if you're a black person. I understand the hurt that happened and the horrible things that happened. I am not proud of my ancestors that participated in violence against the black population. And that being said, I wouldn't support it today either. So if anyone comes in this county and they protest that monument and they do violence because of that monument, then you know what? They need to be arrested. I don't care what color they are. I don't care where they come from. That is against the law. And that's what it's all about the law. So I stand with Charles Smith on the harm that came, the terrible astrated, astrat, the, atrocity. I'm so upset I can barely even talk, Charles. It upsets me. It hurts me to know. But then again, perhaps we need to make sure that we do keep that war 
in front of our children so they can learn from the mistakes that happened in this country so many years ago. Because, you know, it seems to me that we're starting to see some of the same things happening all over again. We're going down the wrong direction. (coughs) And it seems to me that if we give in to the thugs and the violence that's taking place, we are no better. We cannot allow this to happen in Manatee County or anywhere in this country. So I have to tell you, I've had a lot of phone calls. I've had a lot of emails. I've had prayer, many, many, many prayers, asking the Lord to please help me on this decision because this is a huge decision that affects not only Manatee County, but the United States of America. And when I have someone come into our meeting and tell me that we need to stop the Pledge of Allegiance, I mean, I can't believe some of the things that I'm hearing today that's going on in this country. So, you know, I, I feel in my heart that I understand how some people might not want to see that memorial. For me, that memorial shows a horrible time that went on in this country, and we can't make it stop. We can't make the history change. It is what it is. Am I proud of it? No. But it's our history. It happened because the slaves came here from England, not by our ancestors necessarily, because not all of us were from England. But that's how it started in this country. Terrible thing. Would it happen here today? Absolutely not. Would anybody let that happen today? Absolutely not. So I have to tell you, I don't like moving monuments that were put here way before I was ever even thought of in my mama's eye. I don't like to make those decisions. But perhaps we need to look at moving all of this together. We can't erase our history. We can't move a monument because we're afraid that people might come in and cause harm. That's breaking the law, and they need to be arrested. But I do also think that maybe it is time to move that monument somewhere else where the Civil War that Florida was a part of, it was a southern state, whether you like it or not, it was part of the Confederacy. We can't change that. Maybe we need to have one area where we have monuments that talks about the history, not just of this state, but of this country. And Charles, i got to tell you something. My heart goes out. I, I'm watching you on TV. My heart's breaking. But my heart's breaking for the veterans in that war that died defending their homes and the only thing they knew in this country, who, by the way, never had a slave. So there's hurt there, and I think we need to remember it on both sides of the issue. And the only thing that I keep thinking to myself, I can't help but think what Dr. King would say if he was alive today at what is happening in this country, because I think it's despicable. Betsy, I don't have anything else to say. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, I, I just want to, again, clarify what is the proposal was simply to put this memorial pedestal into safekeeping, to remove it, put it in safekeeping, not to come to a conclusion on where it will ultimately be placed. No one is at all recommending that it be destroyed in any way. And that has been supported by the folks that raised the money, uh, and I probably shouldn't say that, by Ms. Green, to do that to keep it for safekeeping because of what we've seen throughout this country happening to memorials that are located 
in a place where people do have concerns, a place of justice, a courthouse, where people are supposed to all be treated the same. Um, you know, my, my perception is very different. Um, I uh, was raised in the North. I went through some riots, went through some riots in Michigan in the 1960s. Um, I'm very aware of some of the issues, but I had a uh, family that took me, my mother took me to the March on Washington in 1968 so that I would understand what that was all about. You know, there's an old saying, you have to be carefully taught, and people need to learn history. It's not easy, but you have to understand the history and what it means to people. And we aren't the same today that we were in 1924. We have a very different knowledge base. We have a very different demographic than we had then. No one is saying that the reason that that memorial was put up by those folks, if you look at the list, the leadership here in Manatee County that donated to create that memorial, but it was a very different time, 1924. You know, so some of us do remember very strongly the civil rights era and what it meant, and because we kind of lived through it. And obviously, I'm white. I didn't live through it the way black people did. So it affects people differently, and we have to be aware of that. And to say that this is something that our forefathers put forth and therefore cannot be removed, I don't buy that. I don't buy that argument because I know what it means to people. People have told me what it means to them. And people will look at this at a justice, the Center for Justice in our community, and say, that is a memorial that reminds me of a time when there was no justice. Now, I spent the summer reading books, watching movies, interesting about the Holocaust. I said it was my summer of man's inhumanity of man. Read all these books about the Holocaust. Read a book called Homegoing about where the slaves did come from. Fascinating book. Um, was written about slavery and how it started with black tribes against black tribes selling people. Just an amazing book. Really told my, changed my whole perception about where slavery came from. But it's good. It's good to get educated. And I think educated people make good decisions. So I'm going to go to Commissioner Whitmore. Madam Chair, could I ask you who gave you this recommendation? And you did speak to whom now? Could you clarify that? I did. I spoke who, to Who did she represent? The Jan daughters. Green, she is president of the local chapter of the United Daughters of the Confederacy okay. and chairman of the Manatee County Historical Commission. Ms. Green is at home. I called her at home. She obviously did not get a meeting together. She didn't take a vote. I want to clarify that. But she's very concerned about this memorial statue that was put in place by her organization in 1924. She's concerned about the safety. And so she did ask that we do, in fact, remove the existing memorial statue and put it in safekeeping until a community decision can be had about where is the appropriate place to put this. So that was her recommendation to me. Thank you, she Madam She told me Chair. she would put that in writing. I hadn't checked my email most recently. Commissioner Whitmore? Um, may I have the sheriff come down again, the sheriff's representative, please? And while, while he's coming down, um, I... Oh, Colonel Dennison. I know. Well, you say those I was waiting until I came down. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Smith. I made sure that I knew your name, <laughs> Colonel. Yes, um, I've heard, and again, I'm not watching it as much as I can because it's terrible and I don't do violence. You know, I came from a violent background, and I can't deal with violence. I hate it. So... Um, we, we would rather not have it either. Yeah, I know, and that's why I'm glad you're here. But I've heard that um, other groups are coming, hate crime groups, white supremacists. I heard there's gangs in this area or groups in this area that are white supremacists that I had never heard of. I've lived here 48 years, and I'm just so upset about all the stuff I'm hearing. And well, the, the potential's there. I mean, I, I don't want to scare you and tell you positively we know that's going to take place because we don't. You know, a lot of these idle threats may very well be that. Now, we were going to take them in a positive manner and make sure that our plan 
is prepared for that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, we're hoping for a peaceful demonstration. Okay, I, I, I've had tons of calls all day, all day yesterday, of leaders in the community, citizens in the community, business community, friends, saying, please don't take this monument down because you're feeding into what's going all over. And um, thank you for the comments that some of you have made. The thing that I'm, and, and because of this organization put this up, now you have a representative from the organization that's asking us to take it down for safety purposes, not to destroy it. So that's where I am right now. I had no, um, you know, I represent a lot, I represent the whole county. And I've maybe heard from 20, 20 people to say, take it down. But I've heard from probably 50 or 60 over a day and a half calling me, stopping me, telling me otherwise. And it was mainly because of all this, this hate, these hate groups, the white supremacist, and this violence against Jews, and all this disgusting stuff because of who you believe in and who you are. I'm a nurse. My husband's a surgeon. I can tell you, I don't care what color you are, when we cut you open, you're all the same inside. And what's so disgusting is to, and, and I've seen it, and I think it's disgusting how people are treated on who they are and everything. This is a very volatile time now, and it's very hard. I got two little grandkids. It's so hard to see all this hate. Um, governments turn that way. I mean, people can think they can say anything they want to you, they would never talk to their dog like they talk to us sometimes. I just can't believe that our, our kids, are, that our parents, you know, can't try to, to teach our kids better. I did not support our, uh, taking this down because of our history. Truthfully, I've lived here. I was in the Detroit riots. I was born in Detroit. I moved down here. I came to Manatee High School, I think in 69, and then they had the riots there because we were segregating the high school. Well, I lived by myself when I was 15. I rode the bus, and my grandma in Michigan saw me on the bus getting off. Why were you at school? And I said, well, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to go. So, I mean, I've been both places. And, um, and I hate how people are treated. And people up here at the dais know that. I don't care who you are, you, do, you are due respect, and they know me from my soul. That's how I am. But we have the organization that has put their sweat into this organization since 1924, asking us to protect it. So I think that's kind of what's before us today. And then I think this organization and the historical society and other groups, both sides, need to come and find a place that's fitting so this place, this memorial, doesn't get torn down. But in 48 years, I did not know it was there until I saw the news the other night, and I looked outside my window and saw it. And I'm maybe embarrassed to say it, but I don't deal with hate. I don't deal with that stuff, and I just have never even realized it was there. So you have two county commissioners that never re recognized that it was there. So again, three. Okay, hey, we got three. Are you done, Carol? So what I'm saying is um, I know we're going to hear from the public, but when we do hear from the public, I hope you recognize the group that actually put this monument there is asking us to protect it. The other thing is a whole other issue, whether we keep it there or not. But these people that put it there in the 20s and the group that's maintained it for years want us now to protect it. So we got to figure out what to do. Commissioner Trace. But Afternoon, Colonel. I have two questions for you. Uh, number one, is the sheriff recommending the removal? I mean, would that help you in your job? And number two, if we do remove it, Will that uh, make the possibility of a riot go away, or would we possibly remove it and have accomplished absolutely nothing? First of all, I don't want to, I don't want to speak for the sheriff or put words in his mouth because we've we've spoke about security issues and setting up a strategic plan as far as avoiding any sure. controversy. And that place, you know, that that has been set in place. But I don't want to speak in his behalf for that from a political or you know personal standpoint. Uh, in your second half of the question, if you would just repeat that for me. If we do remove it, will that uh, make the event go away or make the event quieter? Or 
is there a very good possibility that we could remove it and we could still have tremendous violence? So in other words, are we actually accomplishing anything in Europe in, in, a, in a safety opinion, which, no offense, you're the number one safety guy in the county. I mean, are we accomplishing pressure. anything? Yeah, no, yeah, no pressure. Thank, thank, well, thanks you're rep no you're pressure representing for him today. Yes. <laughs> he no, put you no on problem. the hot speat, seat. Excuse I mean, that, that's very difficult to answer, cut and clear, saying yes or no to either one of those. Uh, because you've got two different perspectives, two different viewpoints. Now, obviously, one part, if you remove it, that's going to satisfy. You, by, but by removing it on the other side may create an issue right. because, obviously, they don't want it to be moved. Mm -hmm. So which uh, party are we giving in to? Well, it, it, it does boil down to that within reason. People that are you know, it definitely does. I mean, I, I, from, from a personal standpoint, I mean, you know, definitely both sides have valid disputes. And from a law enforcement perspective, all we're going to do is allow them to demonstrate that in a peaceful manner, which is what made this country. And that's what will continue to make this country. Well, I just guess we're here to make a safety decision. A safety decision. Yes. And, you know, we don't know. I'm, I'm, going to be, I'm going to be totally honest with you and frank. I'm not sure I like that. that that can take place. Mm -hmm. But after saying that, I, I'm from my perspective where I'm, I'm handling this in a strategic plan to make sure that the public and the demonstrators that come here on both sides get equal opportunity to do such in a safe atmosphere, that's what we're going to do. I'd, I'd like to hear from the public. Thank you. We will hear from the public. Commissioner Johnson. Um, yeah. Sure. Just a sec. We'll go, we'll go after Commissioner Johnson. He hasn't spoken yet. You know how much he speaks, Vanessa, yeah. so we're going to hear from him. <laughs> okay, that's great. Let me you know, just say, you know, and the, and the few people that I've talked to since uh, we got the notice late yesterday afternoon about this meeting today, and and my and this is also my own personal opinion, I thought we were nuts to have this meeting. Mm -hmm. I thought we were putting gaso <laughs> gasoline onto a fire that we didn't need to do. We obviously have an issue with the monument. Um, you know, I would have liked to have seen us try to settle it get more input. At this point, I feel like I'm being bullied from one side or the other side. It's a no-win situation. Mm -hmm. You know, if we take it down, you're going to have the other group coming in. If we leave it up, you got the same thing. But, you know, now we've been put in a position up here, the, the commissioners, to have to make a decision so that one side, one bully group is going to win, the other bully group's going to lose. Now, now you know how we feel every day. Yeah, you know. Oh, and, us too up here. And, and you know, and I and you know, I, I'm you know, I'm just a little aggravated, you know, that, that we we've had to get to this point because I think we could have handled this a whole lot better. I think, you know, we, you know, peaceful demonstrations have been going on for years. I, I, you know, I respect the sheriff's department. I know you and your group, uh, Dwayne, you know, have a plan in place, and you're going to do what you need to do to try to keep it peaceful. Yes, and um, you know, I have full confidence in that now. But now we have to, you know, we're going to have to sit there and make make a decision that I think is just going to inflame the situation uh, come Monday afternoon, and uh, and and I'm and I'm sorry that I have to be up here and make be part of that decision making uh, process. Well, the board voted to put the statute in place. The only way that it could be removed, even temporarily, is by board action. Commissioner Baugh. Actually, uh, Commissioner Johnson. I am amazed at what you just said because I can tell you that's exactly, exactly the way I'm feeling. I did not like hearing that we were going to have an emergency meeting on this um, because I felt <coughs> like that it really didn't give us the opportunity to have the dialogue and the discussion with the community the way we should. I was prepared and am prepared to make a motion to let the people of Manatee County decide uh, about either moving that monument and putting it somewhere else or what they wanted to see as a whole because I don't think that truly uh, it is something that this board should ultimately decide. Um, I do believe that we are just going to give in to, as you said, Commissioner Johnson, you've got two bully sides going on. And either we're going to give in to this one or we're going to give in to this is not going to solve the situation, and the sheriff's department probably still will have a mess on their hands. So I don't see where this is a win-win. I appreciate the fact that um, 
you know, we need to try and protect the monument. I understand it. But, you know, the laws are put into place, uh, and we need to make sure the laws don't break. The people don't break the laws. And if they do, they need to be arrested. And that's what it all boils down to. So uh, that's where I stand at this point. I think we do need to have dialogue on this situation. I do not believe that ultimately we have to make a decision on that today. Um, although I can tell you that probably when we do have more time to dialogue with the community, um, I feel that the monument will be moved. Um, I sympathize uh, truly. Uh, Commissioner Smith made some good, you know, comments. but at the same time, you've got a lot of other people too <coughs> that have the same feelings, except on the other, you know, side of the issue. So. Um, I don't like giving in to any bully group. I don't think that's what county government or any government should do. Um, so I, I got to tell you, I was not happy to hear about this emergency meeting. I'm not sure how it all came about, but I wasn't thrilled um, because I think it, it's a no-win situation and it's not going to solve the issue at hand. Thank you. Mr. Oh, and by, one more thing. Uh, Commissioner Trace, you could not have been more eloquent in your statement than you were. It was wonderful. Thank you. Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Vanessa. Madam Chair, <coughs> with the utmost respect, I commend you for in the will of crisis making a leadership decision. This when you find your real leaders. I have no issue that my colleagues voted it down Maybe leadership. But this chair made <coughs> a decision based on the issue of what may be coming Monday. We don't know. The colonel just said so. I respect the decision she made. It showed that she's looking out for all people in Manatee County. The issue when we talking about bullies on both sides, <laughs> I only heard one side saying, get rid of the Jews, kill the blacks, and I got my gun. And I believe in white supremacy. I only heard one side saying that now. So let's keep the dialogue real. I would not even be in this discussion if these issues had not been hijacked and used as a rod to destroy this community. Leadership is in the position when you make a decision, and that's character also, a tough decision. Or oh, it's going to be some people upset on both sides of the fence. Upset, Commissioner Smith, upset with him. Commissioner Benack, I'm upset with you. But in the end of the day, if it's the will of the good people on both sides, by the way, Green Berets, who fought in the war 80-some years old, told me, remove it because they hijacking what has actually stood for and then turn the calls. This is what they're telling me. They're, they've turned the situation. I fought 80 years ago in the war, 96 years old. But now they've taken this issue that it wasn't supposed to be. Now I'm offended at what they're doing to my legacy. This is what I'm hearing from people who fought. I don't know what they're hearing. Yeah. Read what Robert E. Lee said about uh, these kind of memorials. Read it online. I mean, Do your research. He said he didn't want these because the country had to come together. That's what he said about these memorials. You got to be educated to make a decision. I understand that people, you know, look what happened in Iraq. Everyone says, we start taking down these statues, we're going to lose America. Well, we went and took that statue down of Saddam Hussein, didn't we? We took that down right quick because we wanted them to lose that in Iraq. So to say that this is somehow against America to take down a monument, sorry, I obviously disagree. This is actually, it's interesting to me because we generally don't have this much disagreement, but this is a big issue. And I think that you need to look into it before you, we make a decision. That's why the recommendation came forward. And I'm not gonna apologize for taking a leadership stance oh, here, calling this not. emergency meeting. And you may not like it, 
But you know, that's why we get paid the big bucks. And All right. I, I didn't finish, Madam Chair. I just yeah, wanna, real big bucks. Sorry, that was a joke. I just want to clarify, since some of my colleagues asked where this is going. Oh, this is the first protest. This national organization just can't get here in time enough. This is, ground, this is gonna be ground zero. This is why I want peace in this community. What you see Monday is gonna be the smallest protest you ever have, and still may have six, 800 people. There's buses getting ready to come. I've been on two national boards of civil rights since Commissioner De Sabatino talked about civil rights. I served on the board with Martin Luther King Jr. I know what civil rights are. I know what's going to happen with that monument. And it's not a scare tactic. It's the truth. So what we're talking about, we got a recommendation from the organization that put it up there from the chair that put it up there saying, please take it down till we decide where we're going to put it. And you can put a committee together. Let's do that for peace and harmony because guess what? I feel somebody may get hurt. That was my concern. 87-year-old Green Beret Is it sent me an email Say I have changed my position because I don't want to live my last days of what they're doing to the monument that I liked it. Because that wasn't us anymore. Our ancestors, our children don't need to know that we had this kind of history. Some of our shame is surfacing up again. So this is no knee-jerk decision that the chair called a meeting. She's trying to save life, if possible. She's trying to protect law enforcement, if possible. <laughs> the last thing the colonel wants to do in the sheriff is arrest people to the courthouse. But guess what? They may have to do it. News media across America is calling me, want to interview me. I haven't talked till I find out what's going on here in this meeting. Then I start talking. There's nothing for me to talk about. CNN call, 13, 8, all of you, I talk to you. I just need to see what the vote is. Maybe character is on the losing side of a vote. That's fine with me. But to delay this for another day and keep all this animosity going on in the community makes no sense to me. If what was going on on TV, what I had seen, I wouldn't even support what's taking place today. My niece and nephew and my children should not grow up under hatred and calling out Jews and blacks. They should not live and against biracial marriage also. And by the way, we are recruiting children now with the monument, and we said they're going to stay to the courthouse. Come on, guys, be for real. Mr. Johnson, then we're going to go to public comment. Um, you know, just one crazy idea that actually I pulled up from uh, Hillsborough County is, you know, because I think it's not right that we're going to sit there and spend the $10,000 that we're anticipating. I think, you know, in the sake of harmony, the seven commissioners here should just divide that up, pay each what our, our fair share, and, and have the thing removed at that point, about $1,500 a piece. <laughs> and then we get it sit there and we, we'll, we'll put it aside and then we'll decide where we're gonna replace it someday later. And that way we'll see you know, how serious everybody is and wanting to uh, try to uh, mend this, uh, you know, this uh, conflict that we're having at this point. But that's just, a, you know, like I say, no, no. I saw where the Hillsborough <laughs> County Commissioners did that. They all they each put up a thousand dollars and then they got the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning and the Tampa Bay Rays and the Tampa Bay Bucks to fund that the movement of that Robert E. Lee statue up in Tampa, which I think that movement was somewhere around one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It cost them to take that down type of thing. Uh, and in that case, they're not talking about putting it somewhere else. They're just talking about getting rid of it. If I read the article correctly. But again, crazy idea. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, I'll write it now you really hurt me, Commissioner Johnson. Yeah, you hurt me in yeah, my pocketbook. Yeah. Madam Chair. Commissioner Smith. <laughs> uh, I think the interim uh, county administrator mentioned the fact uh, what it was going to cost, you know, $10,000. Commissioner Smith puts his money where his mouth at. And the people in the community knows this. I donated my whole city commission salary, $7,700 every year that I served, $5,300 every year. No insurance, no benefits. So the issue is not, the issue is what I'm trying to make sure that we don't have a stalling point. It's 10,000 or 9,000 to remove this, this, this statue off the property of the Manatee County Courthouse. It's not 140, 150. 
And it's interesting that what the commissioner says, which he's right. But guess what? The sports team says bad for business to keep it. That's why we made contribution. It's not good business practice. That's why they collectively wrote the checks to keep from losing major events nationally that was going to come to their community. The lighting owners developing downtown. Guess what? It's bad business to keep it up. Of course they wrote a check. So I, I made a motion. I haven't had a second to it. The motion needs to, to pass or die. I can live with it. Madam Chair, what was the motion? I'm sorry. Do you have a motion, Charles? The motion was when you read the letter uh, from, the, from the chairman um, to accept the recommendation that staff made and also the chairwoman of the United, uh, put the name again, to, that was my motion to accept it and remove the statute. Okay. We got it from the chair of the organization, who historically has all the records back to 1924, by the way, who, who understands that now it doesn't change the concept of what even they may have stood for, and they don't feel comfortable anymore. Okay. So your motion is to go with the recommendation to um, provide and request the a contractor be paid up to ten thousand dollars, whatever. What that's, that's that's my motion, Madam Chair. The recommendation from staff, uh, the recommendation from the chairman of that organization, uh, who who is requesting for us to to do what needs to be done today. Uh, and my motion is to follow that direction from staff and from the chair of the organization who actually have ownership of the monument. We're refusing to do what they're asking us. And, and Madam Chair, that is, Madam Chair, that is an estimate at this point, um, $10,000. It could be a little higher, it could be a little lower. Um, so we would need some flexibility on that amount. Okay. All right, um, I'm gonna step down as chair. I'm gonna turn it over to Commissioner De Sabatino so that I can second the motion. You can still second as chair. Oh, can I? Oh, gosh, I always forget. Thank you. <laughs> I can second as chair. I second motion. I had another minute. Are we going to hear from All right. The well, we are going to hear from the public before. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me straight, Reverend. We're going to hear from the public about this issue. And again, this is an emergency meeting. We will have more public comment. We recognize that it's amazing to me to have all of you show up on a Friday afternoon without even an agenda. <laughs> but um, so it's just for a temporary the motion is to move it for temporary storage before it's determined what the ultimate um, location of this um, memorial will be. Um, first up, I have Susie Copeland. Good afternoon to each of you. And I want to start out by saying that uh, Times and circumstances often cause us to change our mind, our position, and our ideas about a particular situation. And with that said, when I look back at the history of our country and look at the cause of the Civil War, and it was really between the free and the slave states discussion. That is the basis of the Civil War. And with that said, I'd like to um, say that uh, I had my notes here and I can't find them. Here we go. That after the Civil War Reconstruction, that was a surge. And when the, when the Supreme Court ruled that the Jim Crow laws were unconstitutional, there began a surge of, uh, of these hate groups rising up. We were, had the terror against blacks during that time. And this period was 1895 to 1915 is the beginning of this period. Uh, and it was Southern whites who started this process. You had lynching of blacks skyrocketed. The KKK became resurgent. And when we look at our times right now, we look at our country right now, we see we need to make some changes with one another. And I believe that now is the time 
to have the monument removed in order that we can start a conversation between all of us that we can get along and have some unity within this community. We don't want, I don't want, the things that happen, that are happening across this country to happen here in Manatee County. I've been here over 40 some years. I've never experienced anything like that. And I don't want to see that happen here in Manatee County. And I'm asking each of you commissioners, for the sake of unity, for the sake of peace, and for the right thing, let's have the monument removed. It's just not the time to have that at our old courthouse, which represents equality and justice. And that does not represent equality and justice. So I'm asking that it, you vote to please have that uh, monument removed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara Hines to be followed by Diane Perry. Barbara Hines, home speech. And this is one of the, going to be one of the. I'm sorry. <laughs> We'll, we'll get it. We'll get it straight. It'll be okay. This is going to be one of the hardest things that I have ever said, said, because there's part of my family that I usually don't talk about. My great-great-granddaddy, might be another great that, I've, that we've lost track of, he fought, his, his last name was Russell, and there are a lot of African Americans who have the name Russell. He fought for the Confederacy in the Civil War. He fought for his way of life, his way of life to own people, to steal their labor, to sell their children, to kill them. And my, my family in Philadelphia, Mississippi, bloody Neshoba, I was related to that town, most of them by blood, and if not, they were kissing kin. We're members of the Klan. Great Uncle TC, he had a bright, shiny, a shiny red robe that I pulled out, and boy, did they come down on me. And talking to a cousin later, as an adult, she volunteered that her daddy's Klan robe was white, but it was satin. This was during the time that they killed the civil rights workers in Philadelphia, Mississippi. Three young men who did nothing but try to register people to vote. The other side of this was, I thought my family were nice people. I did. They were really nice. They were, they were community leaders. That's why I'm not surprised that community leaders were involved in this monument. They were community leaders, so I called Aunt Roberta. Her husband had the bright, shiny red robe. And I said, Aunt Roberta, people are coming down to register people to vote. Can I stay with you? She said, you stay up there where you belong. That's the only mean thing she ever said to me in her life. And I always wonder what would have happened. Would it have been better or worse if I had, if I had insisted on, on coming? My relatives, and half of my blood is from the Confederacy, and my relatives did not fight for the Union. They fought against the United States. Not only that, in Philadelphia, Mississippi, when I was, when I was wandering around, I didn't see a lot of Confederate monuments that, were new, that weren't new Confederate monuments. These, may I, may I, fin may I Please just, just wrap up because we have lots I of speakers I, and I it know is we Friday do, afternoon. I am almost done. Okay. I am almost done. These were placed during the Jim Crow era. They were an in your face, you, we can do anything to you. You're not like us, we're better. And that monument has no place in any public area, much less by a hall of justice. Thank you. Diane Perry to be followed by Liv Coleman.
Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for calling this meeting. Uh, as one of the organizers of the Monday evening um, protest in March, we really appreciate that you are concerned about the safety. We are very much concerned about our safety and everyone's safety as well. So thank you for this. I've had to ad adapt my remarks a little bit after hearing everything that all of you have said. Um, I urge the commissioners to make a wise decision today, a moral decision, a public safety decision, and to remove the Confederate Memorial from the Manatee County Courthouse lawn immediately. Be courageous. Take a stand against the vile institutions of slavery and racism that this memorial symbolizes. You can decide a more appropriate location later. In other words, support the request of the Daughters of the Confederacy and the Historical Society. <clears throat> this memorial would be best suited to a location where its symbolism of racism can be explained within the context of history, where it is a teaching tool and not one that glorifies the institutions of slavery and racism. Certainly, we should study our history, the history that has left a stain on our country. We do not need to honor and glorify that, nor the leaders, nor the soldiers who fought a war against the United States and lost. We cannot allow this statue or any statues in our country to be a symbol or recruiting tool for white supremacy. This memorial has no place in front of a courthouse, no place near a justice center, nor on public property. Think about the message that it sends to black people. That message could be all who enter here are subject to the laws of white men. Is that possible? A more appropriate statue would be the blind lady of justice in front of the courthouse, and hopefully that would send a message. Robert E. Lee's biographer told PBS that Lee himself, after the Civil War, said, by keeping these symbols alive, it would keep the divisions alive. Well, that it is done. And Lee himself wrote to the Gettysburg Battlefield Memorial Association, I think it wiser not to keep open the sores of war. The moral action, the safest action, considering recent events, is to remove this Confederate memorial immediately. Thank you. Thank you. Liv, Col Liv Coleman to be followed by uh, David Finkelstein. Hello, and thank you for your leadership in having this meeting today. Uh, my name is Liv Coleman. I'm a professor of political science at the University of Tampa, um, though I speak only for myself today. I've lived in Manatee County for two years now, and um, I'm planning to participate in the demonstrations on Monday uh, to support the removal of the Confederate monument or memorial. Um, I'd like to see it removed from outside the historic county courthouse. Um, I, I hear with gratitude and appreciation that the, the suggestion by the head of the United, the Daughters of the Confederacy that it be placed in a, uh, for safekeeping elsewhere, I, I welcome that suggestion. Uh, as it is, there's no kind of context around it. Um, it's hard to learn from history when it's just this monument without any extra details or, or, or presentation around it. Um, the cause of the Southern Confederacy was wrong. The Civil War was a traitorous rebellion in which white people murdered fellow Americans for the right to enslave other people. And these Confederate symbols bring pain to many people around this community today, and understandably so. So why remove this now after so many years? You're sitting right now where a movement meets a moment. While racial injustice has simmered for years, add to that rising protests about the direction of the country and the most recent events in Charlottesville, uh, and the president's recent equivocation over a white supremacist and neo-Nazi rally. It's building toward a head right now. Not everyone who sits on the Manatee County Commission will ever get the opportunity to do, to do something so meaningful to help us create a new, more inclusive identity for Manatee County as you have the opportunity before you right now. By removing this 
Well, you can help make a statement that Manatee County recognizes that the systems of slavery and Jim Crow were a stain on Florida and this country and this county, and not ones that we should honor in any form. It's true that many people did not know the monument was here before, but now we do. We're doing some deep soul searching all across America right now about racial injustices from the past that still ripple across society to every school, house of worship, and corner grocery store today. Most of the people who live in Bradenton today are new to the area after World War II, uh, new to Florida even after World War II. That's most people. But no matter when we came to Florida, we all live with a legacy of slavery and Jim Crow disenfranchisement of black Americans. And we all face enduring patterns of de facto residential segregation by race and de facto segregation in our schools. And so we should work to remove symbols of white supremacy, and even more so, we should take up the cause of really coming to grips with its legacy in this community. So let's take a stand and recognize the past and present pain, and try to imagine, imagine Manatee County that whatever one's color, we all stand in dignity, full citizenship, and equal worth before a courthouse. Thank you. Thank you. David Finkelstein to be followed by Ralph Barnett. Thank you, Commissioner and com other commissioners. Um, I um, just wanted to make two points. First of all, I hear people saying that the monument is about history. It's about half history. It's about all the good things about uh, Robert E. Lee, Jefferson Davis, and um, Stonewall Jackson. It doesn't tell the other side. It doesn't tell the other things that they said and did. It doesn't say that Jefferson Davis said, African slavery as it exists in the United States is a moral, a social, and a political blessing. It doesn't say that. It doesn't give both sides. So is it history if it only gives one side and not the other? Jefferson Davis also said, my own convictions, I can't read this, as to Negro slavery are strong. It has its evils and abuses. We recognize the Negro as God and God's book of God's law in nature tells us to recognize him as our inferior, fitted expressly for servitude. You cannot transform the Negro into anything one-tenth as useful or as good as what slavery, slavery enables them to be. That monument does not say that. That monument gives half history. It venerates these people for the few good things that you can find that they did, for, the, for, the, for their uh, bravery in battle. It doesn't say that the vice president of the Confederate States said that the Civil War was about slavery. This has been the greatest fake news ever, that the Civil War was not about slavery. Read all the Confederate senators. Read what they said the, the uh, Civil War is about. Um, that's my, that's my uh, I made my both points at the same time. So I, I ask you, it's, it's very offensive to people. Um, when I was a little boy, I saw it in my hometown, and I said, why do they have a statue for those people that fought for slavery? They, uh, they enslaved the black people. You know, I was Jewish. You know, what were they going to do to me? Um, let's bring this community together. Let's, let's either put up a, a, a statue that says everything about the Civil War. What did Jefferson Davis say and do? The good and the bad. What did uh, all the other people say? The good and the bad. Let's not leave half history up there. It's in front of a courthouse. In a courthouse, each side makes their argument, and a judge decides. This is, this is only making one side. This is as if uh, someone walked into a courthouse and only made one side, and then the judge got to decide. Let's, let's take it down. Thank you. Ralph Barnett, to be followed by Brett Ballinger. Hi. Um, I'd like to preface my remarks uh, um, with a short um, uh, notation to uh, Heather Heyer and the price she paid, uh, just part of a long line of prices paid by people fighting for the equal treatment of people in this country. Um, since for the 10 years I've lived in Bradenton, uh, I've been very aware of this monument, and I think my wife is probably 
gotten tired of me talking about it. But I was introduced to it when I went to pay a parking ticket. And it was right off the right side of the uh, main entrance to the, to the courthouse. The, it just simply shocked me, not so much um, as it made me angry. Because it was just like being at home. Uh, I'm a proud native of Durham, North Carolina. And I'm sorry I wasn't there for the battle at the courthouse. But we finally got that one done. The, the right thing needs to be done here. It doesn't need to be done the same way. Um, I think that if you're going to enter a courthouse, just as every citizen has a reasonable expectation to privacy, every citizen should have a reasonable expectation to justice. And what that memorial says, sitting outside of a courthouse, is that you're black, you're going to be judged for the most part, if not all the way by whites, and you're not going to get justice here. And a quick look at <coughs> the, the records that have come out of uh, this community, whether they're just police records or the court records, pretty much points in that direction. I'm a filmmaker. I spent the last seven, eight years studying Manatee County, Bradenton, Rubonia, Sarasota, all these counties. And there's a lot of information that points to the, just the degradation, the dehumanization that's directed at African Americans and people of color in, gen in general. This is just one thing. This is not the only thing. The Martin Luther King ends not far from here. It also ends on the other end, near where I live, at 27th Street. That's not a mistake. That's not a mistake. It's intentional. The same thing happens in Sarasota. It ends at Tuttle. And on the other, not at Tuttle, at uh, uh, Lockwood Ridge. And on the other end, it ends at 41. That's not a mistake. These things are intentional. The public policy decisions that come from people like yourselves or organizations like this one. And if public policy positions aren't taken to correct them, then you wind up with public positions by citizens that create the kind of problems that are probably going to come on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Brett Ballinger to be followed by Lisa Vernon. Well, in my opinion, it is history. Um, when is it going to stop? Our slavery was from the beginning of the United States of America. If we're going to take down this one, we have to take down George Washington's monument and all the monuments in D.C. So when's it going to stop? Thank you. Alicia Vernon to be followed by Jim Harwood. Uh, let's just point out a few things. First of all, Martin Luther King was a Republican, and Lincoln was a Republican, and the KKK was used in the South to kill off Republicans. If you were a Democrat black, you were not killed. I recall if I, we studied a little bit of that for some gun laws in Georgia when I was trying to pass some gun laws. And they passed the gun laws to keep blacks from protecting themselves when they went to kill the Republican blacks. Um, the other thing, the only people that really care about this racial divide are socialists. They care about what race everybody is. I don't care if you're a white supremacist, they are socialists. I don't care if you're a black lives matter, they are socialists. They all care about what race everybody is. I thought we were melting pot. Thank you. Jim Harwood to be followed by Reverend um, Clark Edwards. Is Jim here? Okay. Uh, Reverend Clark Edwards. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good afternoon. I'm Reverend Clark Edwards, a pastor at First United Methodist Church.
here in Bradenton. I've lived here a year. You know, Bradenton is a wonderful community. I just want to say that. I, I've enjoyed getting to know people and and uh, I work with people in this community, and, and it's a wonderful community, and we want to keep it a wonderful community. Uh, Ms. Green has uh, graciously requested the removal of the, the statue, and uh, uh, that will have to be decided. Uh, I'm here today just simply to offer words of peace. We want peace in this community. We, we don't want another tragedy to occur. And so I want to offer the same words that I offered to this commission a few months ago at a devotion. And I'd like to share these words of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Thank you. Thank you. James Anderson to be followed by Bob J. <laughs> Bob J. Is, is Mr. Anderson oh, yeah. in the house? Please come forward. Hello, this is my first time being at any one of these type of meetings. Uh, I'm here to say that no statue anywhere should be taken down, no matter what the past history was. I'm not an educated historian. But I've always liked history. I've been to a lot of historical places, at least eight or so Civil War battlefields. I have plaques on a couple of them with my own name. Uh, I'm here mainly today because I thought this was going to be about protection for Monday's meeting, not about taking it down and putting it somewhere else. I don't believe it should be moved anywhere. You give people an inch and you take a mile. Okay, that's why the NRA doesn't give up anything. Okay, I'm sick of hearing about everybody wanting to move things because they're afraid of minorities or other people. As far as I'm concerned, and I met with Senator Bill Galvano the other day with the vice president of one of the daughters of the Confederacy, and we sat down and we were talking about issues and they were going to try to get, they're working on trying to get a law passed similar to Alabama's, which would be a very good law, okay? Um, there's a, a number of people out here, I don't know how much history you guys understand, but according to the woman I talked to in the United Daughters of the Confederacy, over 50,000 blacks fought for the Confederacy because they were promised their freedom if they fought for the Confederacy. Okay, over 320-something thousand Confederate soldiers died fighting. They fought for states' rights. Okay, Abraham Lincoln did not make the Emancipation Proclamation until January 1st, 1863. The war started on April 9th, April 12th, 1861. Okay, so do the math, okay? And I have information at home, similar to a couple of these other things read, that Abraham Lincoln didn't think any higher than the blacks, than whoever just read this last thing. He thought blacks were also inferior to whites. I do not, before anyone accuses me of being a racist. Okay, I, was a, I would be against slavery, obviously, but I cannot see giving in to neo-Nazis, Ku Klux Klan, NAACP, transgender people, or anybody else that wants to move any statues anywhere. They had to face the one up on, 495, up on 95, threw red paint all over it, one of the ladies from the Daughters of the Confederacy had a relative whose name was on one of those stones. Thank you, sir. Okay, so. Opinions? 
I said my piece, I guess. Thank you. Thank you for coming. That's what's great about this country. We all can. Bob J. to be followed by Yaya Stanford. Is Bob J. in the audience? Bob J. from Heritage Harbor. Okay. Uh, Yaya Stanford. Hope I'm saying that correctly. We love your name. Yaya. Yaya. I know that's sometimes Greek for grandmother, but. Oh, it is? <laughs> oh, so okay. she's a grandma. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commission, for having this meeting today. I am a part of a group, a community service group here in Manatee County called America First Team Manatee. And what we do, wait, please. She started some, you know, Sir, this is what we're about. Sorry, we need to make sure that there's, we'll give you your time, ma'am. Just hold on a sec. Pause. Okay. We're going to have a very calm discussion today about where we are. I know it's very emotional. Thank you. We do all kinds of community service work. And one of the main things we do is service our veterans across the state. We are part of the rally to protect our monuments that is going to show up on Monday. And I can assure every one of you and everyone here in this room that we are not bullies. We are not about violence. We are about doing good things for our community and our veterans. We respect our history. We recognize there's a lot of ugliness in it, without question, without question. But we would not be where we are today had we not gone through all of that conflict. Erasing it doesn't make it go away. Hiding it, shelving it, destroying it doesn't make it go away and for that matter it makes our it lessens our accomplishments from where we have come we need to recognize the value in those lessons in our history and we need to honor the people that lost their lives serving that getting us to where we are today i do i spend a lot of time on these veterans a lot of energy and i'm deeply saddened by the threat of violence to get us to forget our past. It frightens me that that has come to our community. We live in the greatest country in the world, in, in the greatest state in the greatest country in the world. And Manatee County is absolutely wonderful. That's why we're all here. But to erase how we've gotten here and to ignore our veterans and the memorials that we have erected in their honor, I think is a huge mistake. That's how we feel, but I can assure you again, I want to reiterate, we will rally to protect our monuments and to serve our veterans on Monday, but we aren't about violence at all. And we should not be classified as bullies, and we should not be classified as racist because we're patriots. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Tom Whitaker to be followed by Catherine Brightville. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <clears throat> From a procedural perspective, let me just point out that you all are, this whole proceeding is outside of your rules because it was noticed for one specific topic and that was security measures for Monday and to try to bootstrap in this discussion under the proviso of security med measures is just not appropriate. Uh, and I cite you, and I know Mickey can advise you all on it, uh, but it's your own rule 4.1.3, emergency meetings, uh, fourth line from the bottom. The notice shall be in writing if possible. No other business shall be transacted at the meeting other than the notice that's given in the time frame. So we are definitely outside of that, uh, that notice. So going ahead and moving to the other comments, if this were a legal meeting that we could have a dialogue on, um, <clears throat> to allow outsiders to make a proclamation they're going to show up at a certain date and time, to oppose or promote whatever, and have that create an emergency is 
absolutely flabbergasting. In this day and time, we should be equipped as a community to withstand bullies whatever form they take uh, if we enforce the law. I only have three minutes. I can't pontificate three, four, five times for maybe five or ten minutes at a time as you all have, some of you have, okay? Uh, it's unfortunate because I believe that if we had a workshop or a more, uh, you know, just a place where we can discuss ideas. As Manateans, we can reach the right decision and then we'll live with it. But to have a cram down like this is completely inappropriate. Mm -hmm. To say what happened in Charlottesville is indicative of what will happen here on Monday, we have a choice today. We can declare and proclaim to the world that Manatee County is a no anarchy zone. We have Florida statutes. I would say that uh, a quick review when you get through here of chapter 876, criminal anarchy, treason, and other crimes against public order. If these are enforced, we won't have another Charlottesville. Number one, when you have busloads of anarchists with masks on, climbing off with tear gas and clubs in their hands, you arrest them. You don't pull your troops back or your police back to avoid a confrontation. You don't let two opposing views collide. We can show the world, we can show Charlottesville, we can show Durham, we can show Baltimore, even Tampa, that we'll enforce the law here. And that's all we need to do. Um, I think if we do that, we can show that, yes, we can discuss it, but we shouldn't be discussing it in the streets. We should be discussing it at a properly called commission's meeting where we can all air this out, sort of like what we did on the emergency care hospital fund issue. We can do the same kind of meeting. There, this is not an emergency. Thank you. I'm going to ask, um, because we did discuss this quite at length, um, I'm going to ask Mr. Palmer if you'd weigh in. And I will tell you the reason it was called, because on Monday there is going to be demonstrations. The emergency action would be to remove the statue so that it could be kept for safekeeping. I'm going to ask Mr. Palmer, if he would opine, since this was basically a point of order raised by the gentleman, that we are outside our ordinance in holding this emergency meeting. This is an appropriate emergency meeting. I've reviewed your procedural rules. We discussed this at some length yesterday uh, internally. I discussed it with the administration as well as with you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, should the board decide to remove this memorial today for safety related reasons and then that would be a perfectly lawful action for you to take today okay. thank you that's a point of order if there's another point of order what is the point of order the um, point of order is to ask to read what the notice of the meeting was because right. I don't agree I'm not an attorney Mickey but those words that you just stated um, about possible removal are not in the notice. So can you just read what the notice was? I, do, I am not privy to that at the moment. I don't know if Mr. Uh, Osborne is. In all fairness, I, that he brought up a very good point, and I don't want to go out We are having a meeting, purview. point of order. We are having a meeting, and you've raised a point of order. Whether or not this is a legal meeting, is that your point of order? Commissioner yes, Whitmore? it is. And okay. somebody's looking it up to see what the notice I said. Have, this I is a lawful the, gathering of the Board of County Commissioners. I have, Thank you. I have the statutes. Okay, well, I, I, we My referred point of to order our attorney. is I would like somebody to read what the notice said. Uh, I have wait, wait, wait. We're going to follow. <laughs> she has raised a point of order whether or not this is a legal meeting. We are asking our county attorney to pine on that. I actually do. I'm just looking through my paperwork. Okay, have the notice. I'm trying to meeting. pull it up. Government. We no. did uh, research that now. specifically, and sir, your time is done. So we're. But I wanted to clarify. You all are misapprehending my point of order. I, I didn't say that the calling of the meeting was done right. inappropriately. I'm saying that the uh, notice right. of the subject matter right. to be dealt with. Yes, was yes. not defined appropriately to take in what you, in fact, have used the meeting for. Thank you, I'm sir. going to read the news release. Thank you. We are required, we did research this yeah. per the statutes, that there is a 24-hour notice required for an emergency reading. Mm -hmm. And can you read what the statutes say, Mickey? Do you have those in front of you? For the notice. The, well, excuse me, I procedure. have it here. Procedures. 
Oh. Again, we discussed this yesterday. The 24-hour provision applies only to a special meeting. Oh, and therefore, uh, we are in an emergency meeting today pursuant to Section 4.1.3 of your procedural rules. Now, again, I do not have the notice in front of me. Does anyone here at the dais have the notice yes, in front does. of them? What is the notice? Uh, Madam, Madam Chair, would you mind passing that down to me? Okay. I believe I know what the notice says, but I'd like to have it in front of me in black and white. Before he reads that, Madam Chair, may I? No, let him finish, because he's the attorney. Let him say what he's got to say, then we'll let you guys speak. Okay. But the attorney has the floor right now, and then we'll let you speak about your opinion. So I believe that this is the press release that appeared in the Raiden and Herald yesterday. Notice, right. County commissioners will hold a special meeting tomorrow at 3 p.m. to discuss local public safety concerns in light of national events related to the Charlottesville rally incident. The meeting will be held on the first floor, in the first four chambers of the Manatee County Administrative Building, 1112 Manatee Avenue West. Um, this morning at a Port Authority meeting, county commissioners urged anyone participating in next week's planned unity march and other gatherings to remain peaceful and respectful. Later in the afternoon, Commission Chairman Betsy Banak called the meeting tomorrow for commissioners to get an update and discuss options they can take in advance of Monday's planned events. Mm -hmm. County Commission procedures allow the highest ranking officer to call a meeting with 24 hours notice when the person calling the meeting believes that a situation exists that requires immediate consideration or action by the board. Um, again, the 24 hour provision appears in the special meetings section, although in point of fact, I believe that 24 hours have elapsed since this appeared in the Braden notice. Herald. Yes, um, so even though, again, 24 hours have elapsed, even though the 24 hour requirement is not required for an emergency meeting. This is, in fact, an emergency meeting because it was called by the highest ranking member of this board, that being the current sitting chair. So I'm focusing on the first and I'm focusing on the first and fourth paragraphs in this article slash notice. Quote, county commissioners will hold a special meeting tomorrow at 3 p.m. to discuss local public safety concerns in light of national events related to the Charlottesville rally incident. Right. And then moving to the fourth paragraph. Later in the afternoon, Commission Chairman Betsy Benack called the meeting tomorrow for commissioners to get an update and discuss options they can take in advance of Monday's planned events. Uh, it's my opinion that this language is sufficiently broad to allow this board, mm -hmm. based on safety-related concerns, to take a vote, if you are so inclined today, to remove the memorial. And, and of course, unlike in St. Petersburg, where the mayor just went ahead and removed all of the monuments by himself, I decided that we needed a meeting of our board to do so. And that is why this meeting was called. So. Um, at this time, we're going to continue with public comment. We'll take, um, we're not going to debate this. There's no, no I want to read something into the record. Madam Point Chair. of order. This is not in Robert's Rules of Order no. to disrupt the meeting at this time, which our county attorney has opined as a, is a legal meeting. So that is not a point of order per Robert's Rules of Order or our procedures that is, can be debated at this time. I we can, you can debate Afterwards, after we finish public comment, there will be time for debate, and you can say this meeting should never have been called. It was already opined by Commissioner Johnson that this meeting shouldn't have been called. But we have an opinion by our county attorney. He has answered the point of order request. It has been clarified. I don't believe that there is any more debate on this point of order. I want to ask my board, if the rest of the board, if I can speak at this moment, or you I want me to wait. I don't think that is yeah. point. That's not yeah. our procedure. No, we're allowed to vote. Bar. We're allowed to overrule you. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's right. true. It's yes. True. I'm asking uh, three other commissioners if I can just put so this I, in the record. If it's fairly record. quick. <laughs> three minutes or less. Yes. Okay. You put can put on, three put minutes on, on me. I'll be on. Okay. Um, this meeting that you referenced to the public was deemed a special meeting. It wasn't deemed an emergency meeting. And I think that is misleading to the public at the moment. Special meeting is under our 4.1.2 special meeting. It's called by the 
by the chair with 24 hours notice and emergency meeting is 4.1.3 which is different emergency meeting may be called again by the highest ranking official whenever such emergency meeting is requested but if you're deeming it a special meeting and now you're talk, calling it an emergency meeting those are words words matter and this different than what you're saying here that's all I wanted to say okay I the, the, this board has any number of options available to it today you can choose I'm giving you my legal opinion you can choose to remove the monument sure. you can choose to have the monument remain in place you can choose to say you know in spite of mr. Palmer's opinion I don't like the manner in which this meeting was noticed. Let's do it at a later time. Those are all options that are available to you. Um, while it may have been labeled as a special meeting in the press release, it is as a purely legal matter an emergency meeting. That's and that is the and that is the that is the opinion that I've given you, and I'll I'll, I'll stick by that. Um, but you've got several options available to you today. And uh, Madam Chair. Um still under my three minutes I, I think that the meeting was called to order um, under a false pretense thank you okay well I'm going to continue with public comment at this time Catherine Brightbill good afternoon madam chairman commissioners my name is Catherine Brightbill I was Born and raised in Manatee County, my grandparents moved to Bradenton in 1960. My mom graduated from Manatee High in 1962 when it was still segregated. I grew up hearing the stories about segregated Manatee County about the time that Governor Claude Kirk came to Bradenton and decided to use Bradenton as the last stand to fight against integration. This is part of Manatee County's history that Manatee County has tried to forget while we have tried to forget this history we have this monument here that's only telling half of the story of the civil war this monument that most of us didn't know existed until we go to the courthouse and see it standing there at the courthouse i I've, I've discovered this monument existed when i was called for jury duty um, about 10 years ago uh, I was out walking on the plaza and saw this monument and the first question that came to mind is how can we have equal justice under law when we have this monument to the Confederacy and what the Confederacy stands for and what the Confederacy fought for. So that is part of our history. That's that the that we fought the Civil War for slavery that Manatee County Lit, there were lynchings in Manatee County. The Klan held cross burnings in Manatee County. The governor of Florida came down to Manatee County to stop integration in the state of Florida. Those are not parts of our history that we discuss. I'm all for the discussion that some of the other speakers have about how we need to talk about our history. But as long as this monument remains here on the courthouse square, we aren't talking about our history, we're talking about propaganda. Mm -hmm. And that propaganda needs to be moved to a place where we can contextualize it, where we can actually discuss our history and we can talk about our history in the way that actually teaches our children, that teaches future generations of Manatee County citizens what actually happened here in this county. So please, commissioners, remove this monument to another location such as the Gamble Mansion where we can teach the history correctly and where we are not sending a message that there is no equal justice under law in Manatee County. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Deirdre Green Larkins to be followed by Linda Sheik. Yeah, Shh, I'm not allowed to make comments, <laughs> especially to somebody who has just had their rights protected to speak. <laughs> good evening commissioners good evening madam chair um, y'all may have saw me in the halls or wherever I'm Deidre Green Larkins and I um, 
am the one who created the event page for the Unity March and the peaceful protest here in Manatee County for the removal of the Confederate monument. Um, I can't lie and say that I'm not very nervous for coming up here, but I just believe that, um, you know, um, what Martin Luther King says is that, um, you know, that your life begins to end the day that you become silent about what matters. And I believe that this matters, and I believe that my babies matter. And um, for anyone who's a mother and can understand that, I have to be my baby's voice. And I have to fight for what's right for their futures. My ancestors also fought in that Confederate war and was promised freedom after that. And they never got it. For the ones who did live, they never got it. My great grandfather moved here from Macon, Georgia, and he voluntarily fought in World War I and still came out of that treated less than a human being, treated less than an animal. I, I am asking that the monument be removed and be removed to a place, a museum, Gamble Plantation, what the young lady just said, um, to where we can have that type of dialogue and teach our children um, our history the history that it holds on both sides of it. And I believe that it being in front of a courthouse in a public space is not the rule of thumb when it comes to justice for all and equality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Shake to be followed by Greg C. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know, suppose you remove that statue. What's to stop them from going over to the uh, Gamble Plantation and burning the building down? They had actual slaves there. That's a much better place for them to go. Suppose they go over to the uh, Hernando de Soto Memorial. Do you know that if you go to the website there, it says that um, he, he made a swath through through uh, Florida, he looted farms and villages. But the National Web Park subset, <laughs> National Park Service website states that DeSoto would make a decent fortune trading and shipping Indian slaves. So we're going to have to remove all of these. There's another statue that I find very offensive that I want removed too. It's a famous, it's a statue that's destroyed many lives. I'm speaking of the Ronald McDonald statue. A regular diet of Big Macs makes you fat and gives you heart disease. So where are we going to stop? You know, I think we need to stay, take a stand. You have people who never owned a slave fighting people who were never slaves. How ridiculous is this getting? We're letting people come in from out of state and cause all this chaos. I think we need to take a stand. This is pure and simple mob rule, and there's no place for it in our city. And I, I want to suggest something different. Why not take that statue over there, put a nice canvas around it, and bring in a couple of truckloads of dirt and bury it to protect it so that they can't do anything to it on Monday. Don't remove it. I think that's wrong. And I also, it was kind of interesting watching this whole thing up here where some people on the, on the board knew that this meeting was not called legally and they tried to shut up Robin de Sabatano about this, and I think this is wrong. I don't like watching that. Thank you. Greg C. How you doing? Good. Uh, my name is Greg Cruz. I'm also one of the organizers for Monday's event, Answer Coalition and Black Lives Matter Tampa. Um, there's been a lot of talk Today, I hear a lot of talk about preserving history. Every single commissioner has actually mentioned it in one context or another. But I'm just wondering about if we're really concerned with preserving history, why aren't you guys that adamant about preserving my history? The history that's taught to our children in the school system right now is not accurate. You know that. 
I know that. They know that. But I didn't hear. Do you guys, are you guys that adamant about preserving that type of history, real American history? And we drive by them. No one cares about them at that moment. And they're alive right here where we can actually talk to them and help them right now today. No one's concerned on the board with helping them. We'll walk out this courthouse right now. There'll probably be a veteran or two right out here asking. No one's going to stop and try to feed them, but we're all concerned about the veterans and history and all these other things right now. When it, and, and, and it's ironic that now everyone is concerned when it's your history. Think about that for a minute. After what happened, you know, I heard one of the commissioners say, why all of a sudden? You're right, I didn't know that existed either until our beautiful administration and the racism that exists in that office empowered racists to all of a sudden now use that statue as their meeting point. Now we know that now that we now that I know personally that white supremacists you are using that statue and that's their symbol now. Now that's why I'm activated and now that's why I'm up here and it has to go. That's the reason why. We're not trying to start trouble. Let me just remind you guys because I also heard a commissioner say that you guys are responsible for that courthouse. Well, let me remind everybody that an article was just done six months ago called Bias on the Bench of that very courthouse where they did a year-long investigation and proved that the judges in that very courthouse are disproportionately sentencing black and brown and native people to five times the amount of times as their white counterparts for the same crimes. And you just admit it that you're in charge of that building, you're in charge of that courthouse, and you allow that to happen. Since that article has come out, what have you guys done as a commission to, to make sure that's not still happening? Hey, sir, thank you. Uh, Shay Barnett. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Shay Barnett, citizen of Manatee County. And quite simply, I'd like to show my support for removal of that monument on public property. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That is the last person I have signed up to speak. If anyone else would like to address the board on this issue, please come forward, state your name for the record, and you will have three minutes to address the board. One more okay, one more person. Come on up. She's went to get him, I think. I know. We have someone who'll fill the void. Thank you for your time in an emergency meeting. And I want to thank Commissioner Smith because your name, huh? Cynthia Finn, Manatee County homeowner since 1983. I have two, I have three grandchildren in St. Pete. Two of them are half Jewish. And they live on that block where the guy put up 17 anti-black, anti-Jewish signs not too long ago until the city said you can only have one sign at a time. <laughs> so now it goes from, this is their block. You know, hate Jews, hate blacks, whoever we're hating today. So this is my county, my country, and those are my grandchildren. And we are not doing well by them. Get this goddamn statue out of there. No, no swear. I can say what I want. Eh, it's against our rules. We don't allow. Well, I said it. I said it. Yeah. Keep going. Because I, I watched on TV those, those hate mongers, um, Jews won't take our jobs. Those are my grandchildren. This is not a joke. And it's coming up now because it's coming up now and someone did die last weekend. Those are my grandchildren. The Holocaust happened and what happened here in Manatee County happened and what happens in America happens. And we are going backwards. Those are my grandchildren. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to address the board? Now is your opportunity. My name's Terry. I'm super nervous to be up here. Uh, I was remodeling my house, so I'm in jeans and a t-shirt. It feels silly, but um, I was married uh, to my white husband at the Gamble's Mansion three years ago, 
and uh, couldn't imagine burning it down because I'm a human being with common sense. And any human being with common sense knows what hate looks like. And for people to pretend that that statue doesn't have a very specific meaning is, it's, it's like kindergarten. We all know better. And it shouldn't be destroyed. It's someone's property. Nobody Monday should touch it. That's not what should be done. But it should be removed and put in an area that's much more neutral and about history. And not just one side of history, everyone's history. I witnessed um, some of the commissioners roll their eyes today. And I felt like that was them letting us know that, you know, it doesn't matter if brown, black, and white people are no longer comfortable with this statue here. This is nothing to me because I don't suffer because of this statue. I have suffered. I'm a business owner here in Bradenton, not some fake business. I'm a registered business owner here in Bradenton. And I've been called nigger by customers. I've been stalked. I've been harassed. And I've called Bradenton police, and they've told me to hire a lawyer for protection. I believe the police are better than that. I love the police. I offer discounts to the police at my business. I respect anyone who's willing to serve for this country. But what I won't respect is ignorance. I will not respect people pretending they don't know the pain this statue causes people here in Manatee County. I would never in a million years not show or love the pictures from my wedding at Gamble's Mansion because it was built by slaves or because slaves were there. It's history, and it was beautiful. It was a beautiful wedding. <clears throat> but I paid, and I chose to be there. That was not a day of justice for me. I did not have to be there. That's how all monuments should be, either neutral or in a place where people need to pay to visit them, such as a museum. So that they're not here to hurt or confuse anybody on what Manatee County stands for. Manatee County can be a great county after they show everyone in America exactly who and what they stand for. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else who wants to address the board, now is your time. Please come forward. State your name for the record. For the record, uh, Glenn Jablina. I sent all of you these five pages today, and I'm just going to read the front of it for you. Dear Commissioners, whether you agree or disagree, it should be left up to the voters. This is a local issue, and ur urge the board members to put it on the ballot and let the citizens and the voters of Manatee County decide on this. We get up in an uproar because a few people want it removed. They're entitled to that. And I want to I want to echo Mr. Whitaker's uh, statement that this is an illegal meeting. This is out of the context of the emergency meeting, and he hit the nail on the head. In fact, all of these testimonies should be void, including mine. But that being said, I'm going to move on forward to that. So again, this should be left up to the voter. As far as removing it, you know what that would cost the taxpayers. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars. We Why not? Oh, let's cost. call it 10. How ten. much? $10,000. 10, okay, so let's put an officer there in a squad car overnight. Give him overtime. This, you know, this to remove it is nuts. There are 61 monuments throughout the state. You, I've, sent, I've sent this to everybody. So, I mean, where, where, where is it going to stop? You know, should we not write Pasco because, you know, his name for Samuel Pasco, who fought in the CSA but spent much of the war as a prisoner? Lee County? If we got to write Lee County, should we say, oh, we can't write to you because your county is named after Robert E. Lee? Henry County? If we want to do correspondence there, maybe we shouldn't write them because Francis Asbury Henry, a Confederate captain, was one of the first settlers in the area. But let's not write there because, you know, he's a, he's a Confederate. How about Baker County? James Baker, a lawyer and a judge who sat as a Confederate state of the American senator from Florida. Let's not write Baker County either. This has gotten way out of hand. It's a travesty what happened up there, but I will tell you it was instigated from out of state, out of county people, just as it's being instigated here today. This is a local, local issue decided by Manatee County citizens, period. 
What do you think? How do you think Trump won? Do you think everybody supported Trump? No, it's when they went in that voting booth that they voted for him. That's how he got in. And I think we're going to have the same, the same answer if we take it to a vote that that statue's going to stay. Leave it to the voters. Anyone else? Please come forward, state your name for the record. We ready? Mm -hmm. All right, my name is Jack O'Keefe, and I'm not here to talk in favor of or against the Confederate statue. I'm here on the principles of Florida's law and the federal law. In 1998, the Manti County Courthouse was adopted and designated a historic landmark uh, under the United States Department of Interior. And a contributing factor to why it was designated as a historic landmark, they directly quote, was the Confederate statute erected by the United Daughters of the Confederacy in 1924 is a contributing feature of the property. I've emailed this document to you all, and I've also emailed you the summary of Florida Historic Preservation Law that has Florida's law as well as its federal counterpart and the Supremacy Clause. The Com Board of Commissioners does not have the authority here today to remove that statute. They have to follow a specific procedure. They're trumped by federal law. It's in your emails. I would really suggest that you read it before you make a vote. That's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to address the board on this issue? I would like Mickey to opine if it's actually okay. under the If there's no one else that's going to address the board at this time, I'm going to go ahead and close public comment. Go ahead, Priscilla. I would like Mickey to opine if that actually is, a, if that is true, what he just said. I just sent it to you if you didn't get it. And we did discuss this yesterday because I had a concern. It just came at 437. Commissioners, if I may, um, <clears throat> I had occasion to research the state statutes only yesterday. I find nothing in the state statutes that would prohibit a Board of County Commissioners from removing any monument or statue uh, from any property that uh, is owned by county government. I have not undertaken to research any federal statutes. Now we have a citizen here today suggesting, suggesting that there is some body of federal law uh, that would, uh, that would uh, govern uh, this board's uh, actions in potentially removing this monument. Um, I can't confirm or deny that. I've not done any research of the federal statutes, and I need time to do so if that, you know. I just forwarded it to you. We got I, it. I, 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 I am disinclined. I am disinclined uh, to review federal statutes on the fly while seated at this dais. I am disinclined to do that. That is not the way in which I practice law. Um, uh, Madam Chair, and, if I may. And, uh, Mickey, let Mickey finish. And so, um, so <laughs> if, if there is some federal prohibition here, um, I would be surprised, frankly, to discover that there is a prohibition within the federal statutes. Nevertheless, it's been suggested, and therefore I would need time to examine that question. <clears throat> Commissioner Whitmore, I'm, I'm going to just go down the line. Commissioner Whitmore? Um, I just forwarded you that, and that's with the designation of the courthouse, that's probably important for us to know. Um, you know, it's, and again, it's hard, but um, the people that actually represented that built it want us to protect it. That's another issue. But with this information that we just got, that's very important. So I really don't know what to do now unless we continue this. Uh, we're going to go down the line. Uh, Commissioner De Sabatino. Is that not, do you want to go down the no, line? No, I'm sorry. Or I'm going down the, on the order which you all have clicked in, and I've got Commissioner Ball. Oh, I, just one more thing. The gentleman that just spoke, we can't do anything with the judges across the street. They're hired by the state. They're, we have nothing to do with them. We just have to provide them a place to to do their business. Yeah, I think he misunderstood. Yeah, when just so you know we that we have no in charge. Them. We're only in charge of providing the funding for the uh, the courts facility. and the clerk's office and local courts only. The rest of the courts are funded, so we have no authority. You know, separation of government, judicial. They have their own. We're legislative, executive. So that's we have nothing to do with the judicial. So I'm just saying that, um, Commissioner De Sapatino. Uh, I, I want to wait. Commissioner Smith? 
Um, Madam Chair, the, the fact that what the gentleman spoke to dealing with that statute basically deals with the historic of buildings in general, such as the old courthouse is a historic what he said. building, has nothing to do with monuments. In fact, they're debating the issue uh, in Washington, D.C. about home rule, and it's, the local government has authority to do as they see fit on all monuments. The only state that I'm aware of that it has conflict is the state of Alabama, where they have passed a state law that says you shall not remove off any courthouse. That is it. There's no such thing. And we did look at that. We did look at that yesterday because I was concerned about that because no I know that thing. there are other states that prohibit the removal. And there was some reference made about um, Senator Galvano looking at that law, looking at that law possibly, but we found there was no such law in the state of Florida. That's what we looked at yesterday. Uh, Commissioner Baugh. <laughs> yes, I just have a question for Nikki. Uh, Nikki, if you said that you've not looked at federal law, so my concern is um, if there is a law in place, and I can't, I don't know, but if there is, uh, we don't supersede that, do we? Mm -mm. There's no law. <laughs> well, we don't know. Oh. I'm not an attorney. Commissioners, you're. I, you're... I can't. Commissioners, you're, you, you have broad home rule powers, but those powers cannot contravene either state or federal law. Right. Well, okay. So, Madam Chair, I want to make sure I heard correctly. I apologize. Mickey, does that mean then that if there is a federal law, that whatever we do today, if it's against whatever the federal law is, uh, we would be in violation of that law possibly? Commissioners, I am looking for the very first time and, of course, herein lies one of the difficulties of emergency meetings, okay? Your lawyers mm. typically like to have more time uh, to research matters. So I'm looking for the very first time, a document that I've never laid eyes on before roughly five minutes ago. This appears to be some sort of a form issued by the United States Department of the Interior, mm -hmm. National Register of Historic Places registration form, um, uh, by which the Manatee County Courthouse at 1115 Manatee Avenue West, which is in fact the street address of the historic courthouse across the street, is designated, um, or, or rather does meet the National Register, cri register criteria uh, for the Register of Historic Places. Um, I'm looking for a date on this, uh, May 15, 19 something. It is unreadable. Uh, so that would require a little more research. Uh, actually, there does appear to be uh, the year 1998 associated with one of the signatures on this document. Um, National Park Certification, certifi National Park Service Certification, entered in the National Register, and a check mark appears there. Uh, signature of someone by the last name of Bell, B E A L L. Um, so again, I'm looking at this document for the very first time. Attachment one. And then. Has a Confederate memorial, whatever that says. I'm sorry? When you go down further, there will be an attachment and it lists what's on the thing for the okay. historic thing. And you'll see that's you number know, one. Um, <laughs> in a Vietnam honor roll memorial, et cetera. Okay. Well, well again, I, I, am, I am resistant Mm -hmm. uh, to provide definitive legal guidance on the fly from this dais. This document is very lengthy. Uh, Sorry. George, by the bell. To include attachments, uh, to include schematic diagrams of the historic courthouse. Mm -hmm. um, Can we Mr. Palmer, I mean, we did have discussion with April. Colonizo, who is clerk of the court, keeper of all historic, all of our historic properties, resources, as was stated. She never opined, and I don't see her in the audience, I was going to ask her, <laughs> she never opined that this would be in violation of the historic resource to do this, to put this historic resource in safekeeping so for future consideration or moving it to another location. She never told us we couldn't do that. So this is new information. This is an emergency meeting because we were trying to prevent 
damage to an existing historic resource. But um, I think we're going to have to hear from the rest of the commissioners. We've got a motion on the floor, Commissioner Smith, and then I'm going to go to the vote. Madam Chair, there's no such statue, a federal statue, no. or anything that's giving or governing anything by a monument. Historically, you deal with courthouse. When you do that, that's why the courthouse is standing, by the way, and it wasn't torn down, because the historic courthouse. Uh, the issue of that and the fact that the monument uh, is, is considered historic by the federal government is mute. Furthermore, this meeting that was called, I have sat in meetings such as this one here, and Mr. Palm is correct. The reason is not specific and vague because you don't know what action that you may have to take. So you don't list specifically the action that you may want to take specifically because of special or emergency meetings. We got a hurricane situation. We don't list specifically what action that we're going to need to take until we have dialogue. This is the dialogue that is taking place. It's a special emergency meeting and it's vague specifically for the board to take specific action based on the testimony that comes before the dais. It's nothing about it has to be printed here. If you print it there and you stick by that, you couldn't take no other action. That's why it's not printed as fact. It's vague specifically so you can deal with the concept of what's happening in an emergency situation. For example, if we said we're going to well, we're going to spend $10,000, and somebody said we don't need but $9,099, because we put $10,000 in the item, we couldn't even discuss the $9,099. So I've been in several meetings of the commissioner dealing with these type of meetings, and they always vague specifically for that reason. Uh, my last point, we've heard the testimony uh, uh, on this statute. The history is different for some. Uh, we disagree on history, and my colleagues disagree on history. The young lady came down. She was absolutely correct when governor, uh, governor came down, Governor Kurt, doing desegregation. Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC, was getting ready to head to Florida. Martin Luther King ended up being assassinated. That's the only thing you see in history with King being assassinated. He speaks of Florida. And it was during the segregation that took place. The issue that we have before us ain't got nothing to do with other monuments. That's a cheap way of saying I'm going to neglect my responsibilities. Okay, we can't talk. The public comment has been closed. We're going to wrap this um, up. I think I can tell. Madam Chair, could you put me on the board, please? One minute. Okay. Put Vanessa on the board. Um, Mr. Smith wants to so finish. I think the recommendation, the motion I made, Madam Chair, is clear from the chairman who's requesting this to be done in the name of safety in an emergency special meeting that you call legally. The letter backs that up. We're talking about moving it till we decide a better location in an emergency situation. This hand was dealt to you as chairman. And you did your responsibilities is bringing it to the entire board because you could not speak to us outside of this meeting. So I commend you on doing that. I also commend you on getting ahead of this idea uh, of the disagreement in history for some and others. I'm a protector of history. I understand history. The monument eventually needs to be somewhere. But as you heard out there, there's two sides to that history. The history has suffered many people. Many people have been hurt. Many people lost their property. Many people had their property stole. Many people was put out of business. You have to show respect. I know that you may disagree, but he gets to speak. That's right, he's an elected I mean, official. I mean, he gets the floor. We have no limit on it. However, sir, you are out of order, so please stop. Yeah. Thank you. No, no, no public comments sorry. closed. Right I'm sorry, street. you're going to have to leave, sir. He has to leave. Thank you. Goodbye. Sorry. Thank you. Goodbye. You are being escorted out, sir. Thank you. We're sorry. We're sorry, but you. Wow. Thank you.
Right. Thank you, sir. So Goodbye. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Sir. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Sorry. Smith, please finish. My, my last comment. I'm sorry. We're almost done, Mr. Vanessa. Uh, We're almost Mr. to you. Mr. We got Vanessa, other people on the board. The noise. Did, did you Mr. call on Smith. me? Not yet. Hold Not on, yet. Hold on. I'm sorry. You probably can't hear everybody's talking at once. Commissioner Smith is just finishing up. My, then, my, uh, my last. Price, and then I'll go to you, Vanessa. My last comment, uh, Madam Chair, on this issue is the fact that uh, there are seven uh, county commissioners. We all have different history. We all have different background. All seven of us probably see it a little different. Uh, but in the name of justice and equal justice, uh, this commissioner made a motion. Also, based on the, the, the uh, Ms. Green, the chairwoman of the Daughters of the Co Confederacy, who's requesting this, by the way, for us to take this action until we have a better understanding. And also, to back this mean up, for safety reasons, this was asked of the chair. So let me put some clarity into that. This is nothing you didn't have the authority to do. You were requested to do this. You did your research on this. You talked to staff. You talked to the legal attorney. So all of this stuff, talk about a federal statute. And by the way, they tried to move them out to federal courthouses everywhere else over there. Not the courthouse, but the Capitol now. So what statute uh, is sitting there? So my motion stands. I would like for it to to be up or down, and then we move on from here in a good manner. Okay, we're trying. Grace? I don't like being bullied, and I feel like we've been kind of pushed into a corner, but I'm actually going to go along with the motion, even though I don't, I feel like I've been pushed into this way. I find myself agreeing with Glenn, which this may be the first time ever. <laughs> And the last. <laughs> These pe that I that's actually what I was going to recommend if Charlotteville hadn't happened and we'd had time. I believe that this is a referendum. It should have been on uh, November, not whatever, November 18th. Um, 2018. We should have had a referendum in November of 18. Maybe we can put it in the yeah. put it in there and we can decide then. But. I believe there's going to be violence if we don't do something today. I think for a safety issue, we're going to have to. But where do we draw the line? We're going to have to draw a line somewhere. I'm not sure today is the right place. Um, and I will be making a motion whenever it's proper that if we do decide to remove this, that we also never, ever put monuments, memorials, name anything that has a person. Because in 100 years from now, I don't want political correctness. A commission have to come down here on political correctness. Public places, we should not, I guess we should not have anything. <laughs> Vietnam veterans, um, monuments yeah. out there. So what are we gonna do now? When, that, when there's a proper time for that. But like I said, I will, be, I will be going with the motion, and I will like to see it being on a referendum where we end up with this. And I just don't like outside people coming to Manatee County and telling us what to do, but it is just granted. Everyone I've talked to thinks it should not be moved, but it is not worth dying for and so hopefully i'm hoping that there will be no violence that we can put it aside we can decide when we have time unfortunately we're kind of backed into a corner thank you okay i'm going to go to commissioner Baugh. thank you <laughs> um commissioner uh trey you are speaking with uh, definite leadership qualities there uh, but i do have a couple of questions please it does seem to me, and I didn't hear where we were corrected, um, that I, I, I think the federal law uh, issue is still out there. I don't think that we settled that. If we did, please let me know because I couldn't tell. There was so much talking going on I couldn't hear. Um, but I am concerned that we've not answered that issue. Um, second of all, uh, Betsy, if you would, please. Um, I could not tell from the Sheriff's Department if someone, if the monument was not moved mm -hmm. and people tried to uh, damage it in any way, would they be arrested for that? Um, those are two qu main questions that I have because my concern is with the courthouse being a historical um, place like it is, I, I, I really am shocked that we're not sure about the federal law and whether or not that's an issue because, I mean, I was prepared to ask that question earlier. Um, second of all, um, if in fact we're not sure about the federal issue, then I believe that we need to stop right now so that we don't break any laws ourselves 
and say, okay, you know, if we can't move the issue or the monument without knowing that we're breaking any laws, um, will the monument be protected by law enforcement? And then number three, um, Commissioner Trace, I, I, I'm, I'm torn there. I'm, I'm real close to being with you and, and Commissioner Smith on this because, you know, I, I, I feel for what, I'm, I, what I've heard from so many, but I still believe in my heart that this is an issue that the citizens only of Manatee County should decide. So, Madam Chair, I realize we got a motion and a second on the floor. I commend you for taking the steps that you did, Madam Chair, in reference to that motion. Um, but if it doesn't pass, then I would ask, uh, I would be prepared to make another motion that we put the monument uh, situation on the ballot in 2018. Okay. Um, Thank you. Well, I don't think we're going to take any other motions because this is a special or a emergency meeting to only deal with safety issues. So that's why there's one issue. Please answer my issue. questions that I've raised so I'll know how I can okay. vote. Okay. Uh, Captain Dennison, if you could reply to the protection issue of the monument. Yes. Memorial. S so. Speaking in behalf of the Sheriff's Office, we are going to enforce any law that is broken. Now, <laughs> after saying that, it's not, it's not a monumental law. It's, it's Florida state statute law. It goes beyond just the monument. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually breaking of the law. That's what we're going to enforce. I, you know, we can't get caught up into that. I don't, I don't have that option. I'm strictly going to enforce the law to protect the citizens. That's all citizens. Whether they agree or disagree that this monument stays erect or it goes down. It's got nothing to do with that. It's just Florida state statute is all we're going to enforce. If the law is broken, we will take action, and that individual or individuals will be arrested. I, I think her question was if somebody shows up with a baseball bat and starts whacking at this um, very old statue, will they be arrested? Yes, they will. They're, at that point in time, they're in violation of state statute. Okay. Not pertaining to the monument, but the fact they have broken a state statute, the law, and that's what we enforce. They're attacking. And we will do so. County property. Correct. In a they're committing a criminal mischief. Okay. Did that yes. answer your question, Vanessa? Yes, ma'am. And, and the only other question I have is, is regarding federal law, because I did hear Mickey say that he had not researched that, and I, I'm, I'm a little concerned. I, I want to make sure that we're not, um, you know, maybe risking a situation there with the federal government. Well... Well, you say, Mickey, should we not take action because there we... Um, <clears throat> again, I'm looking at this document for the first time. It, it um, <laughs> um, with the continuing caveat that I'm resistant to offer these kinds of opinions on the fly, you know, th this is a, a document that's published by the Florida Bar dated June 2008. And it, um, when, when you... Typically, and I believe this would be the case with Manatee County, we have a historic preservation ordinance in place. Right. And so apparently when you have a, uh, a historic designation such as we apparently have with regard to the historic courthouse, uh, in order to get those historic designations, I believe you have to have a historic uh, designation ordinance in place, which I believe this government does. I'm certainly not an expert at it, uh, although uh, my instinct is that uh, I may very well become an expert in the coming days. Um, uh, but I'm just quoting here from this Florida, pub uh, Florida Bar uh, publication from 2008. Uh, Any historic preservation ordinance should establish a permitting process for alteration or modification of listed properties. This permitting should be coordinated with other local authorities so that other permits are only given when the, preserva when the preservation board has issued a, quote, certificate of appropriateness, signifying its approval of the requested action. A similar procedure should require the preservation board to review requests to demolish listed properties okay. and contributing structures within historic districts. Oh. The preservation board should ideally have the power to prevent, not merely delay, demolition of listed properties. And that's under the heading of, quote, regulation of new construction, alteration, or demolition. So, uh, so, so we have a number of questions in play here. You know, does the historic designation apply strictly to the four corners of the courthouse structure? 
uh, or does it extend beyond the four corners of the courthouse structure to include the lawns and all installations on those lawns? I cannot answer that question as I sit here. It's, it's okay. also not in the jurisdiction of Manatee County, I don't believe. I do believe it is in the jurisdiction of the city of Bradenton. It is oh, no. not county property. It's in the right. city of Bradenton. Oh. Right? <laughs> Let's all go Can I ask you this? Hold, hold on, hold on, oh, no, hold on. Right? The courthouse is owned by Manatee County government. Now, well, does Manatee County government's historic preservation ordinance extend to within the municipal boundaries? I cannot answer that question as I sit here right now. So we are. Mr. Barnett, and. and I'm um, not going to guess. No, I'd, I'd have to research that. We are a certified local government through the state of Florida. <coughs> I don't know. I'd have to go read that. You know, John? wasn't here. It, I, I, John, well, I can tell you because I worked on the project. I worked on the reconstruction of the courthouse. It is in the jurisdiction of the city of Bradenton. When we wanted to get a height variance, we had to go to the city of Bradenton to get a height variance for the a judicial center. It is not in the jurisdiction of Manatee County. I can tell you that. If you take it all the way back to the basis of a building permit, we don't issue a sure. building permit. For building for permit sure. purposes, no question. The City right of Bradenton is the sole the right is the sole vote. governing authority. No question for we building don't. permit purposes. Our ordinance not does not our apply problem. to the City of Bradenton property. Our historic ordinance does not apply. John, will you opine on that? Yes, since I'm not the uh, expert. John Osborne, uh, the the city or the building and the site is obviously in the City of Bradenton. And I did dis discuss this issue with the city planner of Bradenton today, and they recognize the building as part of their city historic preservation ordinances, but not the monument or the site itself. Um, I was talking, whispering to Mickey a little bit about uh, historic preservation. I was involved in that with the county, my previous job here at the county. And when it comes to the national and state and even local level historic preservation, um, it, I know. Those, those regulations are for the preservation of the properties and things like that, obviously. However, when you have, in my experience, I can't quote the federal rule or anything off the top of my head. However, in my experience over the years, it has been if you have an issue with a structure, a building, a monument, and you have a public safety issue present, you need to take care of it. That, that is the first and foremost thing you do, and, the, and they, they usually recognize that. And there is a process we would go through if we, the board decided to remove this to amend any paperwork we have. And this is regulated to the federal level by the National Park Service. Uh, so we would work with them on this in the future when we just, if the board decided to remove it, and if we decided to place it somewhere else in the future, we would work with them in the appropriate paperwork to do that. And it's just, it, it's a process we would go through with them as well. Uh, Madam Chair, when available, please. You still have the floor, Commissioner Baugh. <laughs> okay. Um, if I've heard correctly, and I, I, I will admit I'm having a hard time here, but if I did hear correctly, uh, the county attorney cannot uh, absolutely say at this point without further investigation whether or not there's a federal situation. And I believe I just heard uh, John Osborne talking about uh, the forestry. Is that correct? Interior. Did I hear correctly? He, John was talking about the fact that it is in the city of Bradenton, that he talked to the city planner about it. John opined that, John, just speak loudly. I should not be. Sorry, I'll try to lean in a little closer here. Uh, the city recognized the fact that the building is part and covered by their historic preservation ordinances, but not the site or the monument. Uh, but the county attorney could not verify that the federal government is not involved. Is that correct? I cannot confirm or deny the accuracy of the statements made by the city employee to Mr. Osborne. So he's got a okay. research. I will have to say, Madam Chair, in, in reference to this situation, then, I am very hesitant to vote on the motion that's on the floor. Um, I, I don't know what else to say other than I don't think that we're really in a position to uh, vote, although I, I feel for Commissioner Smith and what I'm hearing, and I understand it, I don't feel that we're at the point to be able to vote on such a motion at this point. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and call for the vote. No, I have Please. I'm on the, I just have one thing. Madam Chair. Yeah, because the possible, possible. I don't, All right, I'm sorry. I was trying to get us to the vote. Sorry. Commissioner Smith has the floor after. Madam, Madam Chair, you know, I don't know what. I don't, maybe I don't. Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Osborne clearly stated uh, the Bernie. facts as he see from speaking to the city. 
that it does not cover this monument. Uh, the issue with the federal government could easily be dealt with with the action of the motion uh, if that is the issue, whatever the federal government may stay, say. The King Home is a historic building. The museum came is historic. They move stuff all the time. From the standpoint of this vote, let's vote it up or down, and the ones who want to not support it, let's do it. I have not heard anyone saying we're doing anything illegal. The motion can easily be amended to add those concerns to it. But we're dealing with Monday. And I thought staff said that it's a procedure you go through anyway after the fact uh, with paperwork, if need be, to deal with these issues. Uh, not before you make a vote, but after you make a vote. So I'm very um, concerned about what people is hearing. If you want to vote opposed to it, fine. But let's take action today. Go, guess what? No action, whatever side, and people talking about that side, is going to be trouble after this meeting. Commissioner, and, I, and I hate to say that. Okay, Commissioner Whitmore. And I just want to clarify, I heard somewhere a while back, and I can't remember exactly the wordage, when there's an emergency declared, it's open-ended. That's not true. I was mayor of a city, and I declared an emergency. And in order to do that, you had to state for public a purpose what it was, and it was to evacuate the city. So that part is not true. Now, I want to respect these the people that actually put the monument there's decision. But then I'm hearing, and, but I can't make a decision. I'm not an attorney. I'm a nurse. Um, John Osborne is not an attorney. Our attorney is saying right here that he has to research it. I have somebody else that said this notice wasn't um, advertised correctly. Me being a layman, it, we weren't specific, I don't think, enough, because I thought we were coming here to talk about public safety and not removing or keeping a monument. I want to respect these ladies, and I would love to get this out by um, Monday, but I think the way that, again, that this whole meeting was put together, and it's nothing against the chairman. Um, you know how social media is. Um, but I think that we have to wait until we get this clear. And I'm not saying that I'm not going to, I mean, I support the people that want it taken down. But legally, I want to, this meeting I think wasn't advertised correctly. And I want to find out what this opinion is um, regarding the courthouse and the grant. So I don't know what to do unless we try to have another meeting in between our meetings next week. I mean, we're going to miss Monday. But if we really want to bring this to a head, we could do that. Or, and definitely, I've had 20 or 30 people say, let's bring it to the voters in 18, but that's a long ways away. So I think we should deal with this problem head on, because I think no matter what decision we make today, it's, it's going to rear its head. No way. I mean, it's not going to go away. So we do need to decide what we're going to do as a board. And there was only, in all fairness, there was only two people that I know that were from out of county. I'm hearing there was a lot of people here from out of county. Oh, only two people mentioned that they their addresses that were out of Manatee County. The rest of the people that I re heard actually are Manatee County residents, and yet we, I respect their opinions too. So let's try to get this, come to some kind of conclusion, and let's just all try to settle down and let's get some end game to this after Mickey gives us some opinions and somebody d does more research. And have another meeting, but it this not is, not in less than 24 hours. I mean, less, I mean, 24 hours notice. I'm, right. There's one. This is a major meeting, Madam about Chair. Whether or not I know. to remove this. It did say that in Monday. the notice. It did not it say that in we the notice. we were going to consider options. It did not say that, and I wish That's we would have known. Position. Well, That's totally as I. Commissioner De Sabatini. Well, I heard it. I. Well, you know this again. This is. Next, I'm actually. on all. <laughs> I'm never on all sides. I'm on all sides. That's it's rare. Just, Write it's that just, down. <laughs> Each side is right, right, and I want to do what's legal, and I, I personally don't feel that the the meeting was uh, portrayed to the public with um, clarity. Um, we're being, we're being. I'm not going to use the word fully. I'm, we're being coerced. coerced. We're being challenged by both sides. You're damn, damn if you do, and damn if you don't. Um, and I, I don't want to do anything illegal before <coughs> Monday. The, the problem is we heard from law enforcement, even if we take it down, 
there's no guarantee that there's going to be more people protesting that we took it down than it's still there. Um, should it be there? Shouldn't it be there? I think the voters need to decide on that. Um, everyone's emailing that it should be moved to this place or that place. That's not the question. We're under the gun, so to speak, that, um, you know, a lot of us are up upset w with the idea of it, that it's reared its ugly head the way it has. Um, where's it going to stop? They're threatening the Washington Monument. They're threat threatening the Jefferson Memorial, Lincoln Monument, Mount Rushmore. All these places are being threatened. Where are we going to stop? And I think we need to get together as a country, as a people of all nations. It's a, it's a melting pot. Um, I would like for this board not to vote and let us get a legal opinion and um, put a shroud over it between now and, and next week till we can get an opinion, put a shroud over it. And uh, that way it's put a shroud over something, you're calling it a death of it. So um, I, I can't see supporting it one way or another. I don't want to vote on it because, because we're going to get slammed either way. And I'm not doing it for political purposes. I'm just doing it for moral, ethical, legal issues. And, uh, you know, again, there's no guarantee that if we take it down and move it, that it's not going to get worse. I think it'll be worse, frankly. Um, okay. and, and I respect All right, we're gonna, your situation. We're going to finish. I'm actually the point. last person to talk here, and I'm going to say, Again, this is a single issue before us. Are we going to take down an historic memorial for protection so it's not a flashpoint? It could not. For, I, yeah, I got the floor. I get the floor for a little I bit. Know. It, it's not. All of those monuments were moved. Get up and the get idea up. and this historical designation was granted way before Manatee County had an historic ordinance. This has been an historic property and building for a long time, so I'm afraid that's a little bit of a red herring. I understand that it's been thrown out, but this building has been an historic monument for a long time, the historic courthouse. That's why it's called the historic courthouse. And we totally redid all of the grounds. All of those monuments that are there were moved around so this idea that you couldn't move one off for temporary storage, I don't believe. I think that's a red herring. But I understand that's been brought forward. People aren't comfortable. I can see where the votes are going. But I'm not going to apologize for putting this on the agenda, for thinking it was important, for discussing this with the president of the Daughters of the Confederacy, whatever they're called mm -hmm. exactly, in trying to protect our community. Y'all can vote the way you want. That's the way it works here. So I can kind of read the votes. You don't want to do anything now. Again, all I can say is everyone, please be calm. This is a very emotional issue. I get it. But we got to take it in context, guys. You got to take what's going on in this country. You got to see what's in the news constantly for the idea that this isn't important in Manatee County. Nope, it is. It's very important in Manatee County, and it's going to continue. But that was the one single issue that was before this board today, whether or not to take action to put this monument, memorial, excuse me, in storage and so that for future action. So that's it. That's what I believe. I'm going to go ahead and call for the vote. One, this, Everyone this, has had a lot of time to share. Oh, I but I have one comment. Oh, I've got to state this, either. Madam Chair. Uh, we don't want to make if four of us get up, we Mr. can't Palmer vote. is actually next on the board, then Commissioner Smith. Did Ooh. you have something you wanted to say, Mr. Palmer? Um, yes. I, I don't think that this, I, tried. I, don't, I don't think that what I'm about to say will be necessarily dispositive of the legal questions. But uh, uh, I have gotten an email from Assistant County Attorney Bill Clegg uh, who tells me that uh, 
there is language in our land development code that indicates that, that the historic preservation requirements in the LDC apply only to unincorporated Manatee County. Uh, but then again, that, that you know, what does that mean in that, that, I, I'm, I'm not sure what that I, means in the overall context here of what we're discussing, and I'm not suggesting that it's by any means dispositive of the questions that you are struggling with here today. Um, and, 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 and the final remark I wanted to make is simply this. Mr. Osborne and I were a bit confused uh, by that portion of Commissioner uh, Smith's motion that made reference to a staff recommendation. No. Your staff has made no recommendations research, one way or the other. Research did they do. Um, and so I just wanted, I, I was a little bit, I was unclear in my mind. They did. So I just want the record to reflect your staff has made, your county attorney's office has made no recommendations, and your staff has made no recommendations. <clears throat> mentioned to the research that they did, Madam Chair. But Madam Chair, ironically, um, you may have received this email about um, Charlotteville. In fact, what few the issue to go further that it was originally a 5-1 vote to deny the removal of the monument that led to the process of what took place. Everybody has that email. Please pull it. Okay. And that what put the few to the organization of people coming there to prevent it from happening. So and I, and I would have like the email. To, uh, All of us have the email. So I just want to put that on the record. And, and I would like staff to clarify that we did discuss different options, correct? That's correct. We discussed a, a half a dozen different options. Options that could be taken. What are they? You don't tell us. What are they? Well, one option, we is, one. one option is don't do anything. Another option is what was that? The, don't do anything. Don't do it. No action. Okay. Another option is the doing what your the motion is is to potentially uh, relocate the statute until you can decide what to do with it. Uh, some other options, including working with historic commission on potentially even modifying uh, the monument. Um, there was a couple other options that are escaping me right now, but basically dealt with either moving, modifying, or. Um, Relocating. And let me read the procedures, since everyone seems to be confused about why we're meeting here. An emergency meeting may be called by the highest ranking officer of the board available. Any emergency meeting may be called only when the person calling them believes that a situation exists that may involve serious consequences and that requires immediate consideration or action by the board. So modifying the uh, memorial, nope, couldn't do that before Monday. That's not an emergency action. The only emergency action was whether or not we could, in fact, take down this <coughs> memorial and store it so it was not a flashpoint for whatever happens on Monday. And you all can vote however you want, and that's what I'm trying to get to is a vote. We have a motion on the floor. All those no, we have comments. I'm going to clarify Sorry, your motion. Come in. Madam Chair, the, the... Nobody's I called the try. question. Commissioner Smith. The, the, the Can we have Sabatino? Can we have Sabatino? For voting? The ele the yeah. Madam saying. Chair, everything you have said from day one is consistent on what is being asked of from us by the Chairman, Ms. Green, to remove it so we can get together collectively and find out what needs to be done. That's exactly what was asked to remove it so we can find out what needs to be done. Thank you. That's the same thing that they're saying now. Thank Who's you. next? Commissioner DiSabatino? No, I just, uh, I'm going to ask the attorney, are we allowed to abstain? It wasn't an, an agenda specific item that we have to vote on. Oh, one, one, of, one of several options that are available to you here today, as just articulated by uh, Mr. Osborne, is to do nothing. Doing nothing is an option available to you today, uh, pending further research and pending further discussion at some future indeterminate time. Um, however, you have a motion on the floor. You have a motion on the floor. In the absence of that motion uh, being withdrawn or the seconder withdrawing the second, the motion that's on the floor needs to be voted on. Thank you. Mr. <clears throat> Whitmore? Okay, I'm sorry. I have a husband that's home in a wheelchair right now, and I'm leaving him by himself all day. Um, I think that it should be that we should honor those women. But I've heard an attorney say that the notice was illegal, which I tend to agree with. I know I'm a layman, but I, I still, our attorneys can't do it on the fly. And this other gentleman that sent us this opinion that actually an attorney in town sent me a message, Joe Hendricks, I think his name is, asked me to forward it to him so everybody in the world's watching this. 
to see the legal opinion. So I don't feel comfortable voting on a legal challenge, and that's what's happening. And it's no fault of anybody. We got called with this emergency meeting, but we didn't maybe, you know, too bad we didn't have all this other information so we could have done it right, because I don't think we've done it right. So I can't honor those ladies' wishes, and I'm praying, because I won't vote for it now when we have two legal opinions that we aren't doing it right, because we're going to get sued, or God knows what else. But I'm, I'm asking for calm through Monday, and I make a commitment that this will come back, back before us, and we will have all our ducks in a row. We will have the clerk of the court, who's actually an attorney who represents all this, who's not here now, to get, you know, and have the community, more input from the community and besides just 24 hours notice. Commissioner Trice. Madam Chair, if I may. Uh, there's, a, there's a motion to call the question. There is a second. I didn't hear it. I'm a sorry. motion by Commissioner Trace to call the question. A second by... Um, Commissioner Johnson, all those in favor signify by saying aye. What are we voting question. on? Calling, Calling the question. question. Remember no, your motion to call the question. Aye. Aye. Raise hands. I'm sorry. Everyone raise your hand on the motion to call the question. You have to ask what Vanessa, Vanessa says. says. Aye. Okay. Yeah, what do you say, aye. Vanessa? Yes. Yes? Yes. Call the question. Okay. So, uh, passes six to one. I guess you didn't I raise your a... hand. Okay. Question. Call the question. All right, motion passes. Call the question. That means we mo vote on the motion. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. All right. All those opposed? Nay. Stay. Nay. Okay. Well, I aye. Think Commissioner Baugh vote. Commissioner Baugh, I know you voted against it, right? Nay. Yeah. Nay. Yeah. What did I she vote? Yay or nay? She nay. voted nay. nay. So it's four to three. three. Okay. Nay. Motion nay. dies. Who are the three who voted for it? Trace. Yeah. Smith and Banak. All right, thank you. Now, before we leave, Madam Chair, oh, no. since it died. What was the vote? It is four, four to three. The motion dies. Five. That was the only action, unless you've got another public safety motion, which was the purpose of the meeting. If you have something that you want to, um, otherwise this meeting Madam is Chair, over. There, Wait. If I may, there was Wait. one thing that was said. If I may add, is this the point where I can... Let me just, well, I was just no, going to make a comment. Can we have this come back to us in the future on a work session or a regular no, meeting? No, we're not interested but in a work session. We're not going to take any other action. It I was have a public, public question. safety. We're I have not a public safety <coughs> motion. Public, yes. I move that we somehow shroud it, plywood it, to protect it before Monday. Right. Okay. okay. We have a motion. Second. To, I was going to say that. Everyone I, cannot I move talk that, at once. I move that somehow county employees, whomever, plywood it, shroud it, cover it, Whatever for protection. Second. Second. Okay. We have a motion to cover it for protection prior Question. to Monday at 6.30. I'm looking at Question. our acting county administrator. John, can you do that? Do something? Yes, Madam Chair, we can okay. do that. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. Question, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Smith, question. What are we asking now? That it be shrouded or covered Fly, somehow with plywood, plywood around, it, around it. it. Hurricane protect it. Protect it. Until when? Until we get Until back with all these uh, legal opinions. Legal opinions. And then we can actually vote one way or the other. Madam, Madam. It's for protection to protect Until the we get a legal actual opinion. monument there. Uh, Madam Chair, I, w I, I would not be supporting that motion there. Okay. It's still there. Okay. I agree. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of it signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Nay. Okay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Six, six, six to one. one. Six to one. Okay. Um, Any other public safety suggestions for Monday other than? You need to say when it's going to be. Well, I guess you don't need to say when it's going to be. Even if. if Madam Chair. Wait. Robin's got the floor and then <laughs> Vanessa. It's my opinion that. Even if we take it down, Commissioner Smith, and I totally respect you, it's still there. So, thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Baugh? Yes. I, I just want to add that, uh, Commissioner Smith, uh, I'd like to work with you on this issue to come to a peaceful uh, solution. Uh, so, please, any way that we can under sunshine, somehow <laughs> work together. Uh, to find a solution, you can count on me. Um, second of all, Madam Chair, I would like to um, Madam Chair. say that if there is any way that perhaps the Sheriff's Department, uh, I don't know what has been done. I've not been in touch like you have, Madam Chair, but 
I want to thank you and Nikki, first of all, for all the hard work you did in trying to put this meeting together. I think it was very smart on your part and Nikki's part uh, to try and move this forward. Had the federal issue not come up, it would have probably passed. Um, but I'm, I'm curious as to whether or not the Sheriff's Department perhaps has looked into, I don't know how this works, but any uh, National Guard uh, help or anything along that line to help to make sure that the city of Bradenton and the, the Manatee Sheriff's Department has the help that they need to secure peace come Monday evening. Uh, Captain Dennison, if you want to reply, I will tell you when Major. I, when I, uh, Colonel, Major, I'm sorry. Colonel, 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 whatever. I'm sorry. I apologize. Colonel, but, yeah, um, please. Yeah. He's got that, that, That's okay, Madam Chair. I know who I am. It's all right. Number two Major, guy. Major, right now. I'm the number two guy. <laughs> to answer your question, uh, I mean, I, mean I, I wish I had more knowledge or a crystal ball and I knew exactly what we were going to contend with, but I can assure you right. we're, we're treating this I mean, and I'm hoping not, but for the worst scenario. Uh, Braden Police Department is also joining in with us, but so between us correlating together, both of us, I think we have a very good plan. And, but once again, I'm, I'm very hopeful that this is gonna be a peaceful demonstration mm -hmm. on both sides. They'll come and say their piece, and I think we're gonna be okay. But we will be prepared. Thank you. All right. Thank um, you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, well, I think we're finished, so uh, Commissioner Smith. Um, Madam Chair, I thank the board for their uh, continued understanding of at least covering this monument up. However, I truly believe at this time that when we talk about sides, that both sides are not happy at this point. Oh, no. We know. But let me say this to... Well, to I'm not taking blame for that one. <laughs> let, yeah, let me... Exactly. But let, allow me to, to say this here is that uh, we've had a, a, a faithful debate on this issue. Uh, this commissioner uh, still thinks it needs to be removed. The will of the power of this board has spoken. And I have to live with that until uh, the next day where I will faithfully fight for the absolute removal and this commissioner will be amongst you Monday uh, in the process of the freedom to advocate for whatever you may believe in. And some of us may be on different sides. I hope it's peacefully. I hope it's love. I hope it's joy. The dialogue that we may have, it may be indifferent to each other, sharing different opinions. But the most important thing that both sides, people die for the right for us to do it. And so I look forward to seeing you Monday, and I will be part of the event, and I expect quite a few people to be there. Thank you, Madam Chair. And everybody, please, please be peaceful. We, that's what we do in this country. We can protest, but we expect everyone to be lawful and peaceful. And thank you all for being here today. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We're adjourned. What?